fullness of your glory. This place of your majesty. Hide me away. Hide me This is your will and mine. This is our heart's desire. <laughs> your glory and your power revealed in my life. This is your will. This is our heart's desire Hidden away in thee Hide me away, O God Hidden away in thee That's where I walk The place of your glory. Overshadowed with your light. <laughs> Jesus. So cold on my head. of your glory your life revealed in Jesus it is your will and it's mine this is our heart's desire that your glory and your power be Hide me away, oh God. Let your life overshadow me. Hide me away, oh God. In your glory. Hidden away. That's where I want to be. This place of your glory. This place of your majesty. This is your will, O oh God, and it is mine.
This is your will and mine. This is your will and mine. This is our heart's desire. Mine and the Father's and the Lord Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Let it be yours too. This is our heart's desire. Your glory and your power revealed in my life. Reveal your life. Hallelujah. Everybody shout to the Lord. Oh, I'm living here, it's well here, it's burning. 
and dwelling here in this perfect love. Oh, I'm living here, dwelling here in this perfect love. Oh, I'm living here, and dwelling here in this perfect love. Oh, I'm living here, dwelling here in this perfect love. And I'm not going up, not going up, not going up, not going up, not going up. Of your prayers, of your beautiful prayers. Oh, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. Of your prayers, of your beautiful prayers. Oh, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. of joy in your presence is life and peace in your presence is fullness of joy in your presence is all I need in your presence is fullness of joy in your presence is life and peace oh in your presence is fullness of joy in your presence is all I need oh in your presence is fullness of joy in your presence is life and peace your presence, fullness of joy, in your presence, all I need. So I'm not going up, not going up, not going up, not going up, not going up. Up oh, your prayer, your beautiful presence, Lord. Oh, I'm not going up, not going up, not going up, not going up, not going up. Of your prayers, your beautiful prayers. No, oh, I'm not going out, not going out, not going out, not going out, not going out. Of your prayers, your beautiful prayers. Lord. Oh, for in your presence, fullness of joy. In your presence, life and peace. In your presence, fullness of joy. In your presence. All I need in your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is life and peace. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is all I need. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is life and peace. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is all I need. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your 
resurrection, my resurrection and my life, your Jesus Christ who raises up the dead, and my knees I bow, and with my tongue I confess that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. Oh, and my knees I bow, and with my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. And my knees I bow, and with my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. The resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. Hallelujah. The resurrection, the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. The resurrection, my resurrection and my life. Oh, Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. Every knee shall bow, every tongue that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. And every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Christ is the Almighty God. The resurrection, the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ who raises up the dead. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that right now you behold our praise and you receive them because they're acceptable unto you because that's what you created in us by the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you that we come to you right now and that we find ourselves to be everything that you've ever desired and everything that is pleasing unto you because we've been washed in the blood of Jesus. Because we've been created anew, O oh God, through the miracle that you brought to pass when you raised Jesus from the dead. Father, we thank you that you filled our mouth with your word and you filled your, our spirits with your life, O oh God. And that you placed within us your power and your divine authority to do your works, to the exploits of heaven, to prove and to make known and even to vindicate as it were those things which you have said, O oh God. Father, we pray tonight that you will be jealous for your namesake in our midst, O oh God. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, that you will grant that there should be signs and wonders by your holy child, Jesus, that in the midst of your church would come forth, Lord, those things which you shouted out from the foundation of the earth. To reclaim your works, O oh God, in the midst of those who you made in your image and your likeness. Oh, God, we praise you tonight. We thank you, Father, for the work of grace. We thank you, Father, that you're going to bring forth excellent things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, the Lord's going to bring forth excellent things in my life. No, no, say it a little bit, say it a little bit more intensely. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Tonight. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you,
The Lord says to us, He says, one, you can keep, just, you can just come on, keep going. It just says, all of a sudden they get real silent. Stop. Good stop. Keep flowing. God says, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him? You made him a little lower than the angels and you crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands and you put all things under his feet. All oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl, the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the, paths of the sea. Lord, you gave dominion to him over all the works of your hands. And I want to talk to you about how that through disobedience, your life, my life, all humanity's life became a desolate wilderness. It became a place that is a wasteland. And now that Father has purposed to bring forth the Garden of Eden, the, the, the pleasant land, the beautiful, fruitful place that displays all of his character and all of his nature and all of his glory and all of his power and all of his might and all of his dominion, that he originally had purposed and established for Adam to live out and for his, all of his descendants to live out as well. Now, you know, many people, scholars and, and ministers alike, they take this verse of scripture and they just apply it to who Jesus is and the life of Jesus, and that's fine because Jesus fulfilled it as the man who walked out exactly what God had purposed. I mean, within the confines of the way that men were reacting to him and treating him and the fact that he didn't have a whole lot of people to reciprocate the kind of divine love, yet still he modeled for us in a very chaotic realm what it is Father purposed for us to be and what he purposed for us to do and how he purposed for us to live. And so tonight, I want you to be able to understand that in the midst of the wilderness, God has called water, caused water to break forth. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in the dry in the dry places, He's brought forth springs. In the dry places, He's brought forth springs. Father so desires to have everything concerning that which belongs to His image, and that which belongs to His likeness established in our life and only those things that he's doing by his spirit and by his word can bring it to pass but you and I have to be willing to participate with him and obey him and step out and do what it is he's doing otherwise we're just like a plant that can absorb no water he sends forth his rain his word is like the rain which he's comes down from heaven and it goes forth the word that goes forth out of his mouth does it return void just like the rain that comes out of heaven that waters the earth so that it may bring forth the bud bring forth the flower bring forth the herb bearing seed and every uh, everything else that you see in the garden so tonight we're just going to give ourselves over to the word of God we can give ourselves over to the things of the spirit of God so that the yoke and the things that have distracted God's people would not even have an opportunity from this day forward to vie for your attention, but that you would begin to drink of the good pleasures of his presence and never want to go out ever again. That you would be so established in ministering to the presence of the Lord and receiving that which he is abundantly supplying, that which the Holy Ghost is at work doing, bringing forth as he prepares us unto every good work, as he establishes in us everything that he has given to us in the new creation that he wants to develop and grow that can only possibly develop and grow as you receive the water of his presence, the water of his word, the water of his spirit, which is a participating with him. Yes, 
I know that the intercession of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight in this place is that every person in here would be hidden away in his life and quit living out your own. Every time you're thinking about how much of a failure you are or the disappointment or this and that, you're living your own life. That's it. Every time you think about all these things that you could do, should do, or try to brag on yourself or take glory to yourself, all you're doing is living out your own life at very best. And by the one she to get hidden away. There is, a, there is a place where you can hide away. There is a place where you can begin to allow the rivers of God to flow forth from you, the wellsprings of the Spirit that would produce those things that belong to tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, knowledge, understanding, revelation, the teachings of God. Right now the presence of the Lord is here in this place because in the midst of His church He has established everything that belongs to the realms of this wonderful praise and thanksgiving, the realms of this glorious ecstasy of fellowshipping with Him where you get so full of all that He is and all that He's doing. You're not interested anymore in the demonic realm, the wilderness and the dry places and the desolate places. You're not interested in the ruins anymore. But you're interested in the ancient dwelling. You're interested in the ancient dwellings. The ruins are no more of interest to you. Let me just kind of frame it up just a little bit in Romans chapter 3 for you. And um, I think I'll just begin right over here in in verse 12. Well, I'll, I'll back up to verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are all together become unprofitable. Unprofitable who? to who? God. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursings and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace they have not known. And the fear of God is not before their eyes. The ruin of men. Man became so ruined, though God fashioned and informed him in the beauty and the splendor of his own image and the paradise of his own likeness, in the splendor and the glory of his own ways, giving him the capacity of all the life that he himself possesses. I mean, the beauty of that one who is unchanging, the one who's immutable, who dwells in the light which no man can see nor any man can approach unto. That if you took all the suns and the expanse of his infinite universe and you brought them together into one place still, they would pale in the, in the, they, would be, they would pale in the beauty of his splendor and glory that could not outshine him. And Father is in his mercy and his grace in the state of man's desolate wilderness and the depravity of his nature being born in sin and shaped in iniquity, he's reached out to recreate. He reached out and he regenerated. He reached out and he brought forth something that was brand new, that was created everything in everything that belongs to that which Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God revealed and manifested. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to develop us and teach us and to establish us in all the things that pertain unto this way and unto this life. He's given us all that we have need of in the full capacity to bring forth the paradise of God. I mean, reality of it is it's like this. And it happened before, before Adam. It happened in one that is called the anointed cherub that covers by Ezekiel uh, in Ezekiel chapter 28, he was in the garden of God. He was in the mountain of God. He was in the paradise of God. 
and for his coverings he had all the splendorous, beautiful, glorious things that are described there in the in terminology with the terminology of jewels and precious things, precious stones, as it were. He had all the splendor, he had all the glory, and God had set him as so, set him so in the beauty of that which Father has purposed for all of his creation, the beauty of his ways and the beauty of his life. But all that glory was turned into corruption because of his disobedience, because of his unwillingness to go on with God and God's ways. And through pride and arrogance and haughtiness, he was cast out and went from glory to ashes. He went from the splendor of the divine into that which is desolate and death and darkness. And so it was reproduced in men. And it was shown in just a few, you know, 100 years, 1500, approximately 65 years. It was shown that man was so vile and so wicked and so desolate and so without God, so void of God. Everything that we just described here by the Spirit of the Lord in Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 10, and really more. Man had become everything unlike God and had become like the realms of the satanic. I mean, it became so bad that God said something that went beyond, you know, anything that he'd even described of devils. It repents me that I even created men. I mean, I never heard God say, repent, I repent that I created angels. I mean, he may have said it, but it's certainly not known. On this scale, God says, that I repent that I've made men. Beaver, there's, there's things that you've allowed in your life that has been a barricade, it's been a barrier from you being able to enjoy this extraordinary life that God has given. And tonight, I believe that that yoke would be broken in the name of Jesus Christ if you're just simply willing to obey God and move on with Him. Tonight, those things that hinder you from flowing and operating and functioning in the realms of the Holy Ghost and the rivers of His pleasure would no longer be able to exist, would no longer be able to influence your attitudes and your appetites and your thinking. Yes. God, the Holy Ghost, would be able to take full control of you. Yes. And in that, in that place, you'd find your connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, your connection with the body of Christ, the people of God. Yes. And then you would begin to receive that which Christ Jesus alone can supply of the life of God that flows into us, that builds us up that by His Word, who is, the, who is the living Word, who builds us up by His Spirit so that He may give to us an inheritance, every one of us who are set apart unto Him. All you who are sanctified are set apart unto Him. Yes. Having be, been created in, in, in righteousness and true holiness, a lot of what you believe are the foundation of that what you believe makes a difference of whether or not you're going to move forward with God or whether you're going to be limited, whether you're going to grow and develop in God or whether you're going to be stagnant, whether you're going to be in a place where Satan can influence you or whether you're going to be constantly tossed back and forth by the things that Satan is doing, by the spiritual wickedness that confronts you, by the tricks of men that the satanic realm uses. To mess with your life and relationship with the Lord. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, all that stuff is broken. Yes. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, your heart's cry and your heart desires that of the Spirit of the Son that says, hide me away. Be hidden away. When all of a sudden you're thinking about what you've done good or what you've done bad or what you've succeeded in or what you think you... Uh, you know, are making headway in. You just don't even, you just like, hide me away. You just hide me away. Hidden away in thee, O oh God, that's where I want to be. The place where you can reveal your glory. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, living God. Well, I'm going to just try my best this morning. I couldn't slow down. There was too much of a, of a river of God that had swept me away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. 
just so you can grab a hold of some verses of Scripture with me. And the first thing I want you to do is I want to remind you tonight of, of Isaiah and chapter 53, which we want to open this with this morning, Isaiah chapter 53 in verse 6. You know, so we're not done with that in case you want to know where we're going. <laughs> Forgive me, did I say 53, 30? Did I say 53? <coughs> Isaiah 35, forgive me. Isaiah 35, verse 6. And I, I just want you to hear, for in the wilderness shall waters break, break out and streams in the desert. This is the first place, one of the first places that the prophets was the foundation of everything that we're built upon and that which Jesus came and fully revealed and made known in more specific language, began to talk about what was going to happen in your life and in my life. The day that we call upon the name of the Lord, we're, we're at an absolute barren wilderness. If you've ever seen, you know, those barren deserts, the, the wastelands of the earth, that's what you look like. That's what I look like. Barren wasteland, not inhabited by any good thing. The place where only, you know, the lizards. And, and, and as scripture describes the, the dragons, every foul thing that will be there. That's what, Father, that was, that's what Father so loved. Father so loved men in the desolation of his life and spiritual state. So loved men. Because he saw in his redemptive plan those who would come and submit themselves to him so that he could bring forth the pleasant land, the paradise, the garden, as it were, a place where he would walk in, a place where he would dwell, a sanctuary that he could inhabit. I figure this should be worth all of our time. I figure this should be worth all of our interest. I figure there should be nothing more that would occupy uh, anything that we would desire other than all this wonderful thing that God wanted to do in His character and His nature. That all He would want to do in the splendor and the majesty of His ways to come and establish these things in you and me and then take it beyond that as it were. Not just the life and the glory revealed in the only begotten Son but also the ministry of power and divine authority and everything that's in the way that would stop you tonight from being able to say to every devil go and it has to obey to blindness to the blind sea. And listen, I'm telling you, think about it. God described us as those who are blind and deaf and dumb and lame when he talks about the death of the wilderness right here in these verses of scripture Ephesians I mean forgive me Isaiah 35 5 through 6 and of course when Jesus came and, 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 and oh, hallelujah truly the lame began to leap as the as the deer at play ha, ha, ha. and the tongue of the of the of the mute or the dumb began to sing Huh? The blind saw and the deaf heard. And that was reproduced as you see it. As the man that sat by the gate called beautiful. As Peter and John came by and said silver and gold have I none. But I've got the well springs from on high. The water has broken forth in the wilderness. There are springs down in the desolate place. It, that which I have I give to thee. And the man began to leap. He rose up and he left. According to Isaiah 35, he did exactly what Isaiah 35 said. Amen. And yeah, the physical display of that which was a spiritual condition began to be revealed that the Messiah, God incarnate, had come and man is now redeemed, that the age of redemption had begun. Hallelujah. That was a week, hallelujah. That deserved a whole bigger, a much bigger response of the Holy Ghost in you than that. You need to practice more. 
You need to practice more. Somebody said, how do I do that? And you begin to lift up your voice and you begin to have intimate fellowship with Almighty God and He'll form within you the prayer of faith. He'll pour, form within you the flow of the Holy Ghost, the breaking forth of the water of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So many people go through crisis because they've never developed a prayer life because anytime you begin to step out and move in the authority of God, it's going to be like this. Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who do you think you are? Watch out. If you don't have the ability to understand those things that are very simple about God's divine plan of how you're built up in the faith by the word of God and established and protected by those things which he said and ruled by those, those, those interests that only belong to him, you'll be taken out. You'll be tossed to and fro like the waves of the sea, up one day, down the next day. But here tonight, we go, we're here to get you established. God has set himself to getting you established. Established in bringing forth the precious fruit of the earth. Established in bringing forth all those fruitful things. Those things that belong to the fruits of righteousness. Hallelujah. The fruits of his light. The fruits of his glory. The fruits of of the kingdom of God, which he said, I'm taking, I'm taking the kingdom away from you so to, to Matthew 21, to Israel. And I'm going to give it to a nation that brings forth the fruit thereof. Yes. And there's got to be a dedication on our part. And I pray tonight, revival strikes your heart. Yes. That revival strikes your heart. Yes. The desolate wilderness of my life, I was deaf. I was blind. I was dumb. I was lame. My life and everything about my life looked like a scorched land in which there was nothing that could grow. There was no habitable dwellings there. There was no water there. There was no place to live there. It was a place uninhabitable. And God in His loving kindness and His tender mercy brought forth the wellspring of life when He, brought, when he created a new man, a new creation. And he brought forth his divine nature and that isn't left unchallenged satan's going to come out against that he's a re he's a rebel he doesn't obey god he doesn't care about god he doesn't believe anybody is redeemed he doesn't believe that anybody is somehow has somehow escaped his control he doesn't believe anything he's disobedient there's not one bit of obedience in him there's not one bit of truth in him he's a liar and he's going to lie and he's going to oppress you and he's going to come at you every way he possibly can and the day that you know your authority the day that you believe god's word and you agree with God's word, the day that you take a hold of fellowship and communion in the Holy Ghost is the day that you're able to stand up against all of his threats and no longer be influenced so that you can go and begin to grow and develop so that constantly things aren't being ruined in your life. That no longer are you a part of the wasteland, but you're a part of the ancient dwellings. Hallelujah. You need to let the river flow. People need to pray in the Holy Ghost and the communion with God, which is not co communication with man, it's communion with God. Yes. Now let yourself be developed and built up in your most holy faith. Until the rapture of heaven takes hold of you and the presence of the Lord rapture, you know, just raptures you. Because that's the water. That's the water. The water is like unto his presence. That's the flood. Father wants his word to cover you like the water that covers the sea. His word that brings forth his knowledge. The word that brings forth his understanding. The word that brings forth his insight. The word that brings forth his wisdom. That's full time. That's full time. That's not part time. It's time for people to quit being part time Christians. Part time with God. Choosing other things rather than communion and fellowship. Delighting in his presence, saying, oh, God, you are my God, and, and meaning it from the heart, and then letting that be developed in your life because Father is going to perfect everything that concerns you. He will establish you. Listen, you want to be counted worthy so that the Lord can fulfill his work of power with faith in you. 2 Thessalonians 1.11. But I'm not going to talk about that right this moment. Let me just kind of show you some of these things here to start with to show you this contrast of what's going on in our life. This new creation that brought, God brought forth. Your life was like the land that God describes 
the earth to be. In Genesis chapter 1, when he says it's empty and void and desolate. There's a lot of people who come to Jesus and they still like the empty and void and desolate. They still find pleasure in the empty and the void and the desolate. They've not experienced God the way that Father intended for them to encounter him. If they did, you'd be like Paul and say it's just all worthless. It's, it's, it's that which is waste. Dung, he said, that we use, that's a sanctified word, dung. There's certain people that admire the flesh, that admire the human existence and human ability and human worth. I would say don't do that. I would say that you need to learn by the Holy Ghost to hate your life in this world, but you can't without an encounter with Him. Yeah. And the good news is He's come to bring you an encounter tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you can understand that, uh, that his, the haropo, that His waters have broken forth in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the new creation. We're talking about the new creation. Amen. We're talking about the new creation. Amen. But you're never going to grow and develop unless you're willing to obey God and move with Him. He calls us to come and dwell in Him and live our life in Him as a branch who lives in the vine. And He says if we'll live out this life, it will allow His Word to dwell in us. And we'll dwell in Him. Then we go into a relationship and a fellowship and a communion that whatever we ask, He will do it. Amen. And I'm asking tonight for your family members. I'm asking tonight for the breakthroughs of your life. I'm asking tonight for San Diego and Southern California. I'm asking tonight for a earth, a, 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 a nation shaking, moving of the power of God in this, in this nation. An earth shaking move of God to the nations throughout the earth. And God can speak through you. The sound of the voice. It's not just the words. It's the sound of the voice. It's the voice in which the words are carried. Oh yeah. I've heard people, I've heard people preach, I didn't understand a word they said, but I felt every syllable. Because of the anointing. Hallelujah. And that isn't something that God has withheld. Anybody who's been born again has received an anointing from Him to know Him, to fellowship with Him, to walk in union with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an anointing to be the children of the Most High God, to have this kind of position, this kind of place, this kind of intimacy. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 3 says, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. Zion is in a mountain in Israel. Zion existed before there was ever a mountain in Israel. Zion is the city of the Lord on the sides of the north. It's the city of the great king. It's not, in a, it's not an earthly habitation. It's something that is ancient. It belongs to, of old. Paul talks about it in Hebrews chapter 12. And he says it's the heavenly Jerusalem made up of the people of God, which he calls the Zion of the Lord. His habitation, his dwelling place. Can you imagine that God has created a beautiful paradise, a place called, uh, uh, the, as it were, the Garden of Eden. And that place of that paradise and that garden is your life. Hallelujah. I know it's hard to imagine, but you might as well go again and accept the new creation. Hallelujah. This wonderful thing that God has created and brought forth. Hey, listen, because I'm telling you, if you're still living in Romans chapter 3, we're going to have an altar call for you tonight. If Romans chapter 3, beginning of verse 10 is your identity, there's going to be an altar call for you tonight. God's going to bring forth a new creation. You no longer exist in Adam, but start existing in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to hide me away. Get away. That's where I want to be. Hallelujah. That place of God, of your manifest glory, your splendor, your majesty. See, the words that gone forth out of Father's mouth is in returning to Him void. He sent forth the word, Christ Jesus, born of a virgin, uh, when the, made in, 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 in the likeness of sinful flesh, made under the law in the fullness of time to redeem you and I from everything that the law declared us to be. Separated, alienated, a desolate wilderness, not a habitable place. But through the new creation, what God has done. 
And my father wants to develop and the fruit and the fruit that he wants to bring forth and the, and the planting of the Lord that you and I now are. That he desires to grow and to develop and to bring forth all that he's purpose and plan. From the foundation of the world. That you and I should be holy. That you and I should be in this place of love. This morning there was so much love, the, so much, the, the manifest love of God and the compassion of God. And that grows and that increases. And, you know, having, knowing and realizing right now that this is the beginnings of the dimensions of love and joy and peace and divine glory that I get to have now in this state and condition. And then, and to recognize, come on now, I want you to go, I want you to go, I want you to go somewhere now, I want you to go somewhere in the spirit, because you can't understand this with your little intellect. You're trying to think how to move yourself around. You ain't got to do nothing. You have to go here, you have to go here with a hungry heart and a thirsty soul. That's, I know, I know how, I know what goes on in the realms of the spirit. I, I, I know something about it. I know when people are trying to grab what God, who is spirit, is doing with their own human understanding. Good nowhere. Because nowhere. Hungry and thirsty takes you everywhere in God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to say like the psalmist, I'm a dry and thirsty land. Where there is no water. I don't have to say like the prophet Isaiah. You know, that when you're thirsty that your tongue swells in your mouth, then the Lord shall open up the heavens. Huh? You said thirsty, your tongue swells in your mouth, then the Lord shall open up heaven in abundance of rain. Hmm? No, because I'm this, I'm this, I'm this beautiful land that has many springs. I'm this Garden of Eden, this new creation where God has brought forth all those beautiful things. I'm the paradise of God, the best real estate that exists. The place Father chose to build His house. I mean, if you had any, if you were allowed to build your house anywhere on the earth and you just kind of traveled the earth, yeah, it'd be hard to make up your mind. You find this place, that's beautiful. And then you go over and look at it a couple of other places. And that's even more beautiful. And, huh? You know, it's like being wanting to build a house everywhere you've gone. The Lord found the most perfect spot. He found the most perfect spot where he wants to build his house, where he's built his house and made his dwelling place. Your life. Yeah. What? 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 begin to see it and understand it and believe that all of a sudden brings you into a communion where you're just like all oh, my delights oh God all your delights are with the sons of men let me just put this just turn this thing around oh God all my delights are in you yeah. are you looking at Isaiah 51 you still there of Isaiah 51 verse 3 for the Lord shall comfort Zion he will comfort all her waste places. The, the people of God that were brought into a covenant with God, but still <coughs> were told by the Lord, you can't come near me. That had it proved continually that their heart wasn't right. They needed a new heart. That their spirit wasn't right. They needed a new spirit. He said, I'm going to comfort your waste places. I will make your wilderness like the Garden of Eden. Yeah. I just want to make sure that you guys understood. I wasn't just talking off the, you know, off the realms of the Spirit without the Word of God. Amen. Making it known. Because a lot of times, like this morning, I just prophesied. I'm, 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 I'm primarily this morning, just tongues, interpretation, tongues, prophecy, knowledge. 
you know, some revelation, amen, and some teachings. Hallelujah. I, I, you know what? I, I just tell you, I found that you can always flow in all the gifts of the Spirit. And that's why I sometimes look at people a little, little odd going, what's wrong with you? Because Father has made this available to everyone. And what is it? That what doubt, what unbelief, what lies, what things are working against you that's keeping the flow of that which God has established in your life, the growth of that which God has planted from seeing, being seen. Many people don't want to move by the Word of God. They want to move what they believe. They want to move in what they believe. They're not willing to risk their life. They're not willing to risk their finances, their reputation. They're not willing to change the culture. They live into the culture, under the culture. They play by the rules. I don't play by no stinking man-made rules. Every rule of God is going to bust every rule of men and every restraint that has been placed upon you and all the things that have fashioned you that says, oh, this is proper etiquette. That ain't etiquette. That ain't etiquette. Unless you say that the realms of the demonic is, is the etiquette that you want to live by. For me, etiquette should speak of that which is divine. That which belongs to the character and the ways of the Lord. People are living, they're confined. Confined. And the things that Satan has persecuted you with and has limited you by and has been, as it were, barriers, you know, where you've lived in a prison of defeat and where, you know, your, your hands have hung down and your knees have been feeble. I mean, I want you to get violently yes. upset. Yes. It's broken. It's yes. smashed. Yes. It's It's destroyed, but it's about time you get violently upset and you start moving with God. You start moving in God. You teachers should break all the rules of school. Good. And that's why God's going to use you and that's why I use you more. You lawyers, you should break all the rules of whatever it is that you're restrained by within your discipline and what's you know, proper protocol. And I don't care, doctors, whatever you think it is that your reputation is riding on. Then God can use you. Because all of a sudden you exalted His rules above the rules of men. You, exalt, you, you exalted what He approves of rather than what the people around you approve of. I'm telling you right now, I, I was some of you, I would take your influence and man, I would go to town with it. I'd wreck havoc in the kingdom of darkness with it. People have their influence and they sit around with their influence and they do nothing with their influence in the kingdom of God. Nothing or very little. Come on now. What you have, God has given to you. He's blessed you with it. It's true. You need to use it as a weapon in the kingdom of God. Quit a, stop using it as something to please yourself and to profit from your own self. Break the rules of men and obey the rules of God. Amen. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, we're talking within the confinements of how men say you're supposed to behave and what you're supposed to act and the restraints that they place upon you. I understand, I didn't hear this firsthand, but I understand that the, the Prime Minister of the UK said, listen, people shouldn't be, recently said, people shouldn't be threatened in the UK, I guess it was either the UK or England, uh, uh, Britain alone, that people shouldn't be threatened to go and tell, to, to tell people about their faith and, and, and about Jesus because without him, Everyone is lost. And she said it something to that effect as I understand it. I don't know, maybe you've been keeping up with the news better than I have. How many of you heard something about that? Two people, the rest of you, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Well, you can, it's not about watching TV. It's about like looking at the news. The paper or something, come on. Are you with me? It's okay, if you don't watch TV at all, you know, come on, you know, I mean, if, I want to see you start doing what Wigglesworth did, okay? Let's see it. Let's bring it. 
find is good live, good live consecrated life, but what you're going to find is you're living so hidden away and Jesus is so preoccupied with him, you don't have time for that. It's not, it's not stopping something so that you can have him because that's earned salvation, you can't have it. That's earned relationship, you can't have it. It's about, you know, come on, it's about being captivated by his presence. Having, you know, knowing that God the Holy Ghost, that God the Lord Jesus, that God the Father is at work and developing you. They're all standing around you. And they're, they're gardeners and they're, you know, they're farmers and they're producing. And, you know, you know I, I told my wife, I've told a couple of other people, I said, as far as, uh, as, far as the ranch goes, uh, this is the year of trees. And so, I, you know, I know what you got to do to make those trees come, come forth. That's a whole lot of work. And here, Papa, he's a, he's a, a vine dresser. He's a husbandman, you know. <laughs> and he's tending our lives to bring forth precious fruit, perfect fruit, to develop within us every dimension of those things that belong to his nature and his character and his display of his power and his majesty. And he's not working offline of us. He's working as we participate with him. He's not working. I said he's not working offline. He's not just sitting. He's not hard at work while you're interested in the world and doing your own thing in earth, and pursuing your own earthly interests. It's the action of God as you and I step out and move with him in the realms of faith and lay hands on the sick. We go and grab people. We go into the highways and the byway and we compel them to come. We use our influence as a weapon, as a tool in the kingdom of God. And what, however, listen, I, I mean, I'm telling you right now, if I, was, if I was a medical doctor, I would tell everybody who is sick and everybody who's in medicine, listen, I've got the answer to all that you have a problem with. Meet me over here. And I would broadcast and I would take out ads in the newspaper. I would put on television commercials. If I, if I was a lawyer, a successful lawyer, I would tell them, I would, tell, I would use that. I would tell people within the framework of my skill set, listen, here's how it's going to work out for you best. You need to come and listen to me. I'm smarter than all the rest of the lawyers out there. <laughs> kind of thing. I would do whatever it took. I would take whatever I had, whatever leverage I had, Huh, whatever influence I had. Yes. And with total abandonment, I'd hand it over to the king and I'd say, will me, oh God. Yes. Will me as a Amen. sharp threshing instrument that has teeth. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. If I was super wealthy, if I was a rich person, I'd say, listen, come and listen to me and I'll tell you how to get wealthy. <laughs> I'll show you how to reproduce riches in your life. Can you imagine the, the, the influence that Bill Gates has with all of his wealth and how many people he could gather together unto himself with his wealth as he has, but he uses it for his own interest or for the interest of, of the group that he hangs with? I pray that God gives you influence and you understand it. I pray that God gives you influence, those of you who will take all of your influence and use it for the kingdom of God. He gives you great influence. And I pray in the name of Jesus, every one of you who have influence, that you'll turn it over to the kingdom of God and quit using it for your own self and your own gain. Because one day you're going to give an account for it. Are you listening to me? Come on now. Lord, you can take out an advertisement and say, listen, I'm interviewing people today who I want to give free legal advice to. Just come and see me. You got them out standing in lines out the door. And you're interviewing anybody who gives their heart to the Lord, genuinely gives, gets saved, you're going to give them some help. You're just processing them through. Ah, well, that's an, in, that's an improper use, you know, of, of your influence. Nonsense. The proper use of it. Huh? Come on, people. Come on now. I pray God give you wisdom and ideas right now while I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. Because everybody in here, you have influence. You have, you have the ability to begin to now touch people's lives that, that I couldn't touch. And the Spirit of the Lord will take you and wield you as a sharp threshing instrument and begin to move through you. How many of you can get into the hospital? How many of you can get in the hospital? You can go, you go bed to bed. How many of you can get into the prison? You can go cell to cell. Huh? How many of you can get into these various different places? You know, soup line, 
overnight stays and huh you, you got to process through the people how many of you can go door to door how many people can go into places where there's poverty and, and, and fatherlessness and hopelessness because when you get there in that participation with God the Holy Ghost father who is working to develop the display of his love and the display of his goodness and the display of his mercy and the display of his joy and this place uh, the display of his power in your life is going to be able to develop you because you're participating with them. otherwise you hold on to your life you lose it you lose it if you lose your life you find it and keep it and to eternal life the very life of God and then, you know, these things are constantly, these constantly things are challenging us where we hang on to our own life, we don't let it go. And, you know, I've, the Lord has done something so wonderful in teaching us how to let go of our life as we yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost and He begins to, He begins to use our tongue as, as an instrument. Huh? Our spirit is His, is, a, is, his, is His organ that He plays. Comes flowing out of us and it gets stronger and builds up into a greater display of authority and a greater display of His power and His grace in our life. And we find that it's a wonderful realm. And, and in the process, we're, we're, faith is being built, this communion is going on because that was just given for communion with God, anyways, not for communication with men. And you find yourself in praying now by the Spirit and hearing what Jesus is praying while He's interceding for us and hearing what the Holy Ghost is praying while He's interceding for us, hearing what's going on in the Father's heart. My goodness, this is a place where we, these things that Father is doing uh, in our life, we're participating with them and it's bringing forth growth and development. And you're not still caught in the same sorrow. You're not still caught in the same disappointment. You're not still caught in the same discouragement. You're not still caught in the same doubt. You're not still caught and imprisoned in the same unbelief. You're not still, you know, limited in the same expressions when God has given an unlimited divine opportunity for the fullness of everything that belongs to His glory. Come on, man. Listen, I'm breaking off this thing. I'm breaking off this thing. I'm breaking off this thing in a people's life that limits you. Because when the Lord talks to us about all things are possible to them that believe, that nothing should be impossible to them believe, it first, then that would believe, it first happens within the dimension of our communion and our fellowship and our holy union with Him and recognizing this place, this dwelling place that He has prepared for Himself, a habitable temple, a habitable land. Hallelujah. You and I ought to be very, very excited about spiritual house. His building, his farm, really his garden. Hallelujah. He will make her wilderness like an Eden. He's made my wilderness like an Eden. He's made my desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness is found therein. Contagious joy and gladness. I sat down by a, I sat down by a person on the airplane last night that knows a, about a fraction about the things of the Lord that most of you know in this place. And as soon as I sat down by him, he said, you're a preacher, aren't you? I could tell. My goodness, I said, come on, man. Let's develop some discernment over here. Come on now. Hallelujah. These things are easy to tell. When you the garden of the Lord, huh? when there's joy and gladness there, when there's a shine on your face, when there's a glow in your heart. Why? Because you've made God's interest your interest, made God's desire your desire, His purpose your purpose. His kingdom is all that you want. You pursue it. You're not like it's... Begging God to do something, it's a pursuit, it's something that you want, that you're actively engaged. Yes. Huh? When you're on hold, it's disappointing, isn't it? But when you're moving, it gets, hey, come on, this is happening. Hey, look, yeah. 
You know what? Even the hard times are good times. Because you engaged men, huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just trying to break you guys through into a better time. True. It's not earn, it's not earn nothing. It's not an earn anything. It's just participating with him. It's just being captivated by him. It's just recognizing, wait, what is it that you do here, oh God? This is so good. I love ministering to people on the level. I just, what I do is I just, you know, God's God is a God of love and he's interested in people. So you just sit down and you get interested. Who are you? How are you doing? What's up? Where are you from? And then, you, and then when somebody goes, all oh, grumpy, uh, <laughs> you don't worry about it. Just, just, all that's happening is that what's going on inside of them is just being revealed to you. And then you sit down and start praying for them. And the Lord shows you. A, a, a friend of mine sat down by a person on the airplane the other day, and, and the person right off the bat, they said, they said, I'm an agnostic, I'm an atheist. And the person said, well, I'm, and he gave his name. And he said, I know what's wrong with you. You've been mad at God since your 16-year-old daughter died. And that's her picture on your computer. <laughs> right, <Ruh -roh. laughs> Who told, where are you from? Who are you? Do I know you? No. But the God that I serve knows you. So I said, how do you develop in that? That then is a flow of the Spirit of God, the flow, the planting of the Lord, the developing of God's work, at, uh, God who is at work in our life, the development of the Word, being able to produce fruit, because you and I are participating, we are going with Him, seeking and saving that which is lost. Yes. To seek and to save that which is lost. Yes. Huh? And we walk, and, and maybe, 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 maybe some of you have been in such a prison that you don't have a compassion, but you can walk around and say, oh God, fill me with a compassion. Oh God, I need a compassion. Oh God, help me to have a compassion. Oh Lord, I want to have an encounter with you. And then you get so intense because you're like, wow, I'm not feeling anything. And then you get so desperate for God, you begin to start fasting and praying. You give yourself more to this word because this word will not, that goes out of his mouth, won't return void, but it's going to produce fruit. And, and you're asking and you want it. And suddenly there becomes a breakthrough in your life. When you find out about all the wonderful things of the breakthroughs that just communion with God, consistent prayer and fasting will produce in your life, you'll be going, you'll be thinking, where have I been all this time? How on earth have I been so disconnected with reality here? I could have had all of this growth, but don't worry. Father, is a, Father has got a great plan on being a restorer of the things that, you know, have gotten consumed and eaten up and, you know, destroyed, messed up. Hallelujah. He's a restorer. I, and I'm going to participate with him. And I'll be a restorer of the path to dwell in. I'm going to raise up the ancient ruins along with him. And if it first begins in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. We sit down. Anybody get up at five in the morning? So you can give me a ride? I mean, not getting up, but you can meet me here at five? Just checking. Just thought we'd try to get the leveling field here. Okay. Amen. I got everybody's attention now, okay? Let, 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 me take over to, let me take you over to Psalm 63. And let's look at this over here in Psalm 63. I mean, forgive me, not Psalm, not Psalm 63, Psalms 107. Just take you over here. You spend some time here. I give you time. I'm, I'm doing it like this so that you turn in your Bible, so you be turning in your Bible. Don't just sit there and look at me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you don't have a Bible, we will get you one. In Jesus' name. It's Psalms 107, verse 33. He turneth rivers into wilderness. Look at this. He turneth rivers into wilderness. What's happening is we're looking at what, we're looking at man 
and, and, and that stepped into the blessing of God, beginning with Adam. And there's been others that stepped into the blessing of God, but they weren't willing to go on with God. They weren't willing to let the grace that had been given to them supply to them the development the Father had purposed. They weren't, they weren't willing to allow His Word to have free course in their life. They weren't willing to agree with Him and to participate with Him. So He said, I'm going to take your rivers now that I've given to you, and I'm going to turn you back into the wilderness. And your water springs, I'm going to turn it back into dry ground. I don't want that. But that's exactly what happened with Adam. That's exactly what happened with man. In the place of disobedience, in the place of not being willing to walk with God and be faithful and keep, and, and keep relationship and communion with God, your fruitful land will become barrenness in the, for the wicked of them that dwell therein. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. And it's collectively, it's individually. And then he turns it back around in verse 35. And he shows us, look at, what you, look at what's available for you. He turned, and here's what he does on the other side of it. For those who are willing to hearken into his voice. He says he turns the wilderness into standing water. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to hook up a 35. Yeah. I'm, not into, I'm not into 30. I'm not into 33 and 30. And I'm not into 33 and 34. Yeah. That's where I came from. That's where mankind came from. I'm into this wonderful restoration. I'm into this wonderful recreation. I'm into this wonderful planting of the Lord that Jesus may be glorified. I'm into the Holy Spirit at work in my life to produce fruit. And I'm focused on it. I'm not just pretend with it. It's not fictional Christianity. I'm focused on that which God demands and commanded being revealed in me. And he tells us exactly what it looks like and what we're supposed to be doing. He, he breaks it all the way down in such detail. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all of us, we look. We stand before him reproved, instructed. Hopefully. He turned the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. That's me. This is the new covenant. This right, this right back over here. This right back over here was Isaiah chapter 35. Huh? In the wilderness, water shall break forth. And in the dry places, springs of water. This new creation, this new covenant, this wonderful thing. If you drink of the water which I have for you, if you drink and receive that which I have to give to you, it shall be a wellspring springing up on the inside of you. And what does the wellspring immediately do? The wellspring already activated the woman. What does she do? She ran to her village and town and became the evangelist of the village and town and said, come and meet the guy who told me everything that I've ever done. People, God's people, you and I, we need to step over into a place of all this wonderful provision that God has given to us in the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits and, uh, and the working of miracles that is found only because you and I are willing to believe what God has made us to be. We're willing to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and start moving with God in this wonderful, un, uh, un, 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 unimaginable depths. That when you think you're deep, you're not even a fraction there. It's so wide. It's wider still. It's so high. Mm. Mm, I'm, I'm hoping you're getting excited. I'm hoping you're getting excited. I'm hoping you're getting excited. I'm hoping that you're laying hold on the flow of the things of the Spirit. I'm hoping that you're going to start being a person where that supply of heaven is, is, is busting forth from rather than always having to go to another meeting to get a drink. I'm hoping communion begins to develop in your life. A surrender begins to develop in your life. A yieldingness of God begins to develop in your life that everything the Father is doing can be expressed through you. Hide me away, O oh God, hidden away. Oh Lord, um, your, your will, it's mine too. Your will, O oh God, it's mine too. Your will, O oh God, it's mine too. What your heart, my, what your heart wants, my heart desires. To our hearts agree on these things, oh God. You can't stay around them very long. 
and not be touched with his compassion, yeah. not be touched with his desires of what he commands, of what he's desperate to bring forth, of what he's, uh, what he's desperate to display, put on display for the people around you. I'm going to tell you right now, listen, if you'll quit being you and start being him, I'm going to tell you right now that your house will change, your workplace will change. Yeah. And, you just go ahead and just receive the empowerment that he gives. You can find yourself as you get people to talk. It's getting people to talk. It's getting them to say something. There's revelation. You know, you know, we, 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 I think that's something that we're trying to do, do it all on, you know, all on our own. No, we're not relying upon the Holy Ghost. Let me hear what God has got to say. Yieldedness to him. Oh, God, use me today. Father, in this, in here in my life, you have developed everything and brought forth all those fruitful things concerning that which belongs to you, your life, in other words. Your existence, you've reproduced in me. That I can lay hold and have and developed in me wisdom. I can lay hold of and have because of that which the planting of the Lord, understanding and knowledge. I can lay hold of and have because, Lord, this is that which you placed within my life. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peace that passes understanding of love that is so, over, so overwhelms me. I'm compelled. I mean, I'm compelled. It isn't that I've got to try to earn something or it isn't that, you know, I've got to do this in order to have that. I'm compelled. Compassion has grabbed hold of me. You know, I, 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 I don't think I have if I ever have, Lord, forgive me. But I don't believe I've ever sat down with somebody and said, well, you know, I've got to, I've got to witness to them. I've got to talk to them about the Lord. That'd be dry shucks. I mean, that'd be like, goodness gracious. Let me sell you this used car. I don't really like it. It doesn't really work for me, but you might like it. But when the, when the love and the compassion is there, the need, I know this person is empty and dry and barren in the wasteland of their life and the devastation of that which has been produced by the realms of darkness have, has left them empty, has left them as they are. And then it's gonna get worse unless they change. Oh, God, use me, use me. I mean, you know, it's one thing, you know, it's a beautiful thing about getting on the airplane, getting in cars with people, you know, getting rides to the airport at five o'clock in the morning. You know, there, there, you just, there's always this, there's always this opportunity and, it's always, Lord God, speak to me. Oh, Lord, speak. Oh, God, you, you so love this person. And it's just all going on before you ever get there. It's, it's going on in the night. It's going on always just churning in your spirit because you're, 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 you're moving with God. You're part of his husbandry. You're part of his building. You're allowing his desires to become your desires. <laughs> his purposes become your purposes. Then you get there and it's no strain. Huh? There's a glory glow. Hey, how are you? Bless you. And everybody's just disarmed right there with the bless you thing. <laughs> Isn't God good? What a wonderful day the Lord's made. It's an opportunity just to grow and develop in Him. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you really capitalize on the silence. <laughs> silence is a great opportunity for you to simply say, Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? Is this your home? Listen to people talk because it's gonna start coming out. They done heard you say bless, huh? They done heard you say God. <laughs> something about he's doing something. And they gonna get all defensive or something. They're gonna, it's gonna come out. And right there in the midst, the Lord just shows you the door. He shows the entryway. He shows you how to speak forth the word that doesn't return void to planet so deep in his word. His word is like water. His word is like a seed. His word is like a fire. His word is like a hammer. It gets the job done. Hallelujah. But it's got to come out of our mouth. And it's got to come out of our mouth by the Holy Ghost. And that's, what, that's why when Pentecost came, the which is the language of the Holy Spirit, came to teach you and I how to speak after the likeness and manner of the and thinking of Almighty God. That's, not, just, not just something for us to do because it's a little blessing, a little blessing that we've received, something that 
doesn't really have any value or meaning outside of, you know, just being able to show off with a, you know, a gift of the Spirit or something. It is the expressions of God teaching us how to talk right, teaching us how to yield to Him so we move in Him instead of moving in our own realm of thinking. It's obvious to tell when somebody's speaking out of self-consciousness. Isn't it obvious? Awkward. Jesus. Oh, but it's a life-giving power as a, as a, as a sharp two-edged sword <laughs> that divides soul from spirit. It's a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. It unveils everything that's going on. I walked into a room the other day, and I'm just so blessed by this. I'm going to, again, I'm telling you, what, you could see it in the Bible, and you could see it in people's lives, and I'm going to tell you, because, it's good, because you want to hunger for it, because anything you see in the Bible, God's put it there to say, you can have this if you want it. Everything in the Bible isn't just extras and redundants, and God's just bragging on somebody else and poor you. It is said, the Lord giving you an example that says, you can have this too. I walked into a room the other day with the worker and he just begins to cry and he begins to sob. He said, when I came to work for you, everything about my life and my relationship with God just got restored and renewed. I can't help it. This grown man, 50 years old, just crying, sobbing. Oh, I said, it's all right, man. I ran over there and said, Oh, the convicting Holy Ghost wonderful work of divine grace that Father was pouring out of this place where His well springs are there supplied, where His rivers from on high flow out, where waters are dry and thirsty land, and wherever a wilderness land is, that water flows, things start to grow. The beauty and the splendor of God begins to be developed and so I'm telling you right now, this is the way it works, and you want this if you don't have it, it's available for you. And the things that Satan is done to persecute you and the things that's the powers of darkness and all the things of this earth's interest is done to keep you as it were restrained in a place where you can't seem to flow there's no power after this night in Amen. Jesus name if you, if you believe it Amen. you have to you, um, yeah. <laughs> there's lame things have got to be healed because you should have been walking long ago Amen. There's blindness that needs to be touched by the power of God so that you can see. Because you should have had the insight long ago. It's insight that only God can give. There's parts of your life that is deaf, you cannot hear. And then the Spirit of the Lord can cause you to hear because it's, it's, the, it's the ability to discern what He's saying. And you can either say, well, I... You can either be overwhelmed by discouragement and disappointment, and that is a place, it's just, and that's a place of bondage. It's a place of bondage. Or you can be stirred by the Spirit of the Lord and say, with hunger and thirst, oh God, I want this thing. I want you to show me how to lay hold on these things. Come on here, people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's a display of liberty and grace now. If you've got this thing constantly working against you where you feel disappointed and discouraged and whatever else condemned, I mean, I tell you right now, you want to be liberated from that mess. And the liberating power of the Holy Ghost is here to set you free. The things that Satan has done against you to hold you back, to keep you back, to discourage you, to disappoint you, to cause you to live in unbelief in the name of Jesus Christ no more. But reality of it is you're going to have to obey the Word of God. You're going to have to believe in the Lord so that you can be established. You have to hearken to His pro prophets so that you can prosper. Because God's going to speak to you and He's going to tell you to do this. And if you say, well, I can't do it or I don't want to do it or I don't agree with you or I don't think like that, well, you know what? You're going to have it. Go do another few, three or four, five laps in the wilderness. Come back. See if you're a little bit more hungry. No, 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 still can't hear? Still don't agree with it? Still exalting your own opinion, your own ideas, your own plan? Well, then let's step back and say, how is your ideas and your plans working for you? Because some people's ideas and plans produce in them a lot of money. So if money was what you wanted, your idea and your plan is superior to mine. So if that's what you want, continue on.
What is your idea and your plan producing for you in your life? If what you want is the things that God has described, that is supposed to be, you know, manifested in the midst of his church, that is supposed to be functioning through you, the fruit, the development, and the maturity of the word of God and of the spirit of God, then you're going to have to be willing to, under, you're going to, be willing to agree with a new plan and a new way of thinking and a new pursuit. Those are some weak amens. Amen. Praise God for your amens. I mean, because it got weaker as it, you know. If your position here tonight and your seating arrangement has to do an indication with your relationship and fellowship with the Lord, I feel sorry for everybody on the back row. But it did kind of get silent, warm, quieter as you went down. I mean, it was just like, if you scaled it, it was like zzzz. Now it could be, you know, the fact of my relative position to you versus the front row. I could hear the front row better. So just understand, if you're on the back row, you have to be louder. Just, just to be equal. You have to be louder to be equal. Uh -huh. You have to be more extravagant with your reaction to the Lord, to, to be equal to these up here. Otherwise, I'm just thinking the only people on, that are moving in the Holy Ghost are on the front row. No, 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 no. Only people even sensitive to God, the Holy Ghost on the front row kind of thing. I'm so caught away in heaven, I don't even know how I'm, I don't even know how I'm standing here. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm able to communicate in words that can be understood. Whew. Psalms 107. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I did Psalms 107. Let me just show you another one. So Isaiah 32, <laughs> verse 13. He says, Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Not a good thing. No. <laughs> and you must understand that that's not an accident that he's using terminology in Genesis chapter 3 because of Adam's sin, of disobedience, of walking away from, the, from a place of communion and fellowship with him. What happened? As soon as Adam <coughs> decides that he wants to do it his own way, God cast him out of the garden into a desolate place. And he says, you can't come back in. And then he curses everything for man's sake and says, the thorns and the briars now come up. Where there was the fir tree, where was the myrtle tree, where there was, you know, the pleasant things and pleasant planting of the Lord, now comes forth briars and thorns and that which is cursed. The best that you could say of your life is that it's cursed without Jesus Christ. And to hold on to whatever it else, whatever your life and your identity is in the world, is to embrace a curse and that which is dead and that which is passing away. All flesh is grass, all the glory of men is the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower thereof fades away. It's only pretty for a little while. But the word of the Lord endures forever. This word of God that is right now nurturing us, that you want to be saturated with, that you want to reign supremely over the way you think, the way that you process, the way that you act, the way that you move, the way that you speak. <laughs> it's his word, receiving his word that produces the fruit. It's like the rain that comes upon the ground that causes the, tr the, the, the trees to grow, the, the tender herbs to come forth, the bud to develop. All the things that bless us and causes, you know, us to enjoy <laughs> food and refreshment. And listen to the realms of the Spirit here. Come on, people. We get a lot to grow inside of a year. And God wants to put this thing on a supernatural scale. In our alliance. And you decide. You decide. I can't decide for you. I can't decide your communion with the Lord. I can't decide your participation with the Lord. I can't decide whether or not you're going to agree with Him, whether or not you're going to throw your life into His hands and you're going to abandon yourself and follow Him. I can't decide that. Yeah. But I can tell you, disciple, the word disciple is, the, is one of the top 10 nouns of reoccurring over and over again, over 1,200 times in the New Testament. God emphasizing what you and I are supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. 
And a disciple is one who is his master, imitates his master, is developed, taught by him to function in his thinking, in the way he functions, the way he, the way he does things, Hallelujah. the way he moves. Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. You know, the, when, 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 um, you know, I'm going to jump ahead of myself because I just, I just do that all the time anyways. And because it just, you know, I just, I just flow with the Holy Ghost. And uh, the, the display of the new covenant, the display that we have been renewed and been restored and been recreated and that which was barren and waste, the Spirit of the Lord has come and moved over the darkness and the chaos of our life and has brought forth, as it were, uh, the dry ground with all of that that God himself commanded to spring forth and the abundance of all life and every good thing. And in this particular instance, it's not the fowl of the heavens and the beast of the field. It's the display of his nature and his glory and his splendor and his majesty to be developed in you and I as a first fruits unto God, having been sealed with the Holy Ghost, to be mentored and taught by God himself. I mean, come on. I mean, these things that the Father has developed in our life, it has as it's overflowing the display that it has come and it has happened because the blind see, because the deaf hear, because the cripple walk, Amen. because the dead are raised to life again. Because as, as we read in verse 5, the blind see, the deaf hear, the mute... The, the, tongue, the, the lame leap as the heart at play, the, the, the tongue of the mute sing. So when John sent his disciples to say, are you the Messiah? Is this the age of redemption? Are you the Redeemer? Matthew chapter 11 says, he is, Jesus just goes off of what the prophets declared concerning a person who is that well-watered ground, that well-watered garden that place of the springs of life where the river of God flows. When the river of God flows, what happens? When that water busts forth, what happens? Everything that has been, that has been ruined, everything that is desolate, everything that is sick, everything that is diseased, receives the life and the power of God. So the blind see, the deaf hear, the crippled walk. Amen. Amen. The mute speak. Yes. Yes. Jesus being the model of what it means to be a new creation. Yes says, in answer to the question, is this the messianic age? Are you the redeemer? Matthew 11, verse 4. Go and show John again the things that you do see and hear. The things that you do see, do you do hear and see? He wasn't putting on a special show because he knew the disciples of John were coming over. This is what you could hear and see any time you dropped in on Jesus. This is the Jesus ministry. This is the fruit that God wants to develop. This is the life that God wants to display. This is the light into a dark and dying world. Listen, this is the salt of the earth. This is the preserving power. This is the testimony of God. This is the, this is the declaration of the witness of the resurrection and the life that has come to us through what Christ Jesus did when he, he was raised up from the dead and raised us up together with him. He says, look what happens here. He says, the, he says to him, I've lost the place again. This is the one thing, when I start reading, my quoting goes out and my reading comes in. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't try to read it, then I would speak it out of my spirit. Huh? Because when I'm in the reading mode, I'm going to think it out of my head. And it's about people, I'm going to just tell you right now, dear people, it's a whole lot better when you just speak it out of your spirit than having to get your... Come on now. Yes. Then you know, all of you are saying amen, and I expect you to see. I expect to see it as, as of this, as of tonight, yes. because God's and, and now God, who answers quickly and will begin to, to develop and bring forth these things in your spirit, so you say, "Go and show John again those things that you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, or you can just say the diseased are cured. The, the diseased that have no cure for it are cured." I said the disease that have no cure for it are cured. How much easier it is to get the disease cured that have a cure. Okay, the incurable diseases, and I like to say it that way because it makes more specific sense to everybody in our context right now. 
the, the, the uncurable diseases are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who sever is not offended in me. Yes, it's the messianic age. The redemption is here. Yeah. The rivers of God are flowing. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. The wilderness and desolate places of the life of men are no more Amen. because the water has broken Hallelujah. forth. And the springs of God. Have come. Exist. He says back to Isaiah 32, 13. He says, upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. What a terrible thing. Now this is the reverse. Instead of getting... Instead of having beauty for ashes, you've got ashes for beauty. Instead of having the oil of joy for mourning, it's been reversed. You have mourning instead of the oil of joy. That's terrible. We don't want that. No. We don't want it. Well, I'm going to obey God. Yes. I'm going to participate with God. I'm in agree. I'm not going to harden my heart. I'm not going to go and put, pursue those things. When he said, don't pursue them. He tells us the conditions of our life for his seed to bring forth the fruit that has been planted in this garden of paradise. He tells us what it's got to look like. He tells us that, you know, that the deceitfulness of riches, the deceitfulness of riches, the pleasure of this world, the cares of this life will choke it. Yeah. Yeah. To just move over into a place of abandonment and faith and, and faith being communion and fellowship with God that he's going to care for you and take care of you that you can occupy yourself and busy yourself with the things of the Spirit of the Lord that you don't have to worry about the stuff. You can cast your care upon Him because He cares for you. That the problems in your house are going to be fixed by Him. Amen. That the problems in your life are going to be fixed by Him. Amen. You're not going to try to fix yourself. You're going to worship. Amen. You're going to give thanks. Amen. If you can open your own blinded eyes, then you can then you can cure your own misbehavior. If you can open up your own deaf ears, then you can, then you can fix the dysfunctional, dysfunctionalness of the attitude and of the appetite that has a disposition less than joy unspeakable and full of glory because he gave it beauty for ashes, the oil of joy. He gave it to us. Gave? Not earned. Gave, did it purchase, gave, gave, given. But, but I've got to participate. And Father, I want you to shine the floodlight of heaven upon this place tonight. Yes. Yes, Lord. Father, you know, you know the hearts of every person in this place. And you know the things that the enemy has tried to do against them. And you know uh, the, the lies that have been fought against and rejected <clears throat> and those that have been accepted. You know, God, the thought processes of everybody in here. You know whether or not those thought processes are the fruit of your word or whether it's a mixture of those things which your word produces or those things uh, and those things which the, the state of men's thinking and the state of their culture produces. And Lord, we ask you to come and help us. We ask you to come and move on our behalf, Father, to sort this out. We ask you to sort this out tonight that Satan can no longer have an advantage against anyone in here, that your church, God, that you purchased with your own blood that is to be glorious church, a glorious church. A glorious church. Without spot or any blemish. One that has been washed with the water of your word. Oh, one that has been saturated by the water of your word. <clears throat> one in which your knowledge dwells upon and, and, and 
and exist in like the water that covers the sea can be revealed in every single person in this place. In the the torment of mind, the disease and the state of the body, the afflictions that go on in any dimension of life. Father, I pray now in Jesus' name that you will cause everybody to be able to see Amen. that it will just fall like burnt cords from off of them. It will fall. It has no power to bind them or to withhold any, any them or, or hold them back because you've liberated us. You broke every chain. You've opened up every prison door. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Strengthen everybody in here right now, Father. Strengthen them. I pray, Holy Spirit, strengthen them. Father, I thank you that you build each person up with your word and with your spirit so they can step into the inheritance, Lord, that they can begin to have revealed through their life all that you purchased for them, all that you have given, freely given. That the exciting, fun things of prophecy, of knowing the heart of God, the mind of the Spirit, can be uttered forth from their life. That they're just given over, oh God, to a heavenly revelation. <laughs> And the Lord says, it will exist like this until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. No thorns here. I'm, I, 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 I'm, the, I'm in the pre-thorn condition. I'm in the pre-cursed condition. Hmm? Thorns and briars should come up. And by the sweat of God, I mean, the, before all that happened, there's no thorns, there's no briars, there's no flies, and there's no, all the rest of the curse. And all the mess and the weeds. There's the thistles. Which is a synonym. And it, <laughs> the rose won't prick you. We in the pre-thorn condition. We are in a place where there is no curse. Nah. He says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruit fulfilled and the fruit fulfilled be counted for a forest. Can you hear something beyond just the concept of oranges and big, you know, fir trees? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? That God is producing within our life the things that He established when He put all of His works under the dominion of man. When He made and put man in a place that He was above the angels. He had dominion over all the works of His hands. In a place of relationship of executing His judgment and His will in the earth. Something that's Something that Jesus showed for us, showed to us, in 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 a, I'm going to say this in a far greater dimension than we would have ever seen exist in Adam within that short period of time, but something that Father purposed for him to have. And what we can't necessarily say certainly about Adam, we can most certainly say about us because of who we are in Christ Jesus and what he's made unto us and what Father has purposed to develop. And it doesn't take a lifetime. It takes a now time, a today time. I grab a hold of it and say, it's a mind time. And I say, I won't, I'm, I'm not going to allow the delays to continue on. I've just got to have this. I'm jealous over it. I'm not jealous over some other person. I'm jealous over the anointing that Father has and the display of His glory and the beauty and the splendor that He's purposed to be in the church. I'm jealous over that which He's jealous over. I'm jealous over His glorious church. I'm jealous over the display of all those things that belong to that which He has planted and which He's called forth, the fruit that He wants to be seen, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the display of His power and His glory. Hallelujah. 
uh, there's, there's absolutely nothing so wonderful as love. And, 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 and knowing the love of God, which everything else in the display of humanity is ruined. It's ruined. It's waste, wilderness, thorn, patch, briar patch. This dumb, blind, deaf, and lame, totally ruined. It can no longer, it can no more display the, the real love of God, then the wilderness can be an example of a Garden of Eden. And to be now renewed in righteousness and true holiness, to be regenerated with the washing of the water of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, now to give myself over to the development of this fruit, the display of this majesty and splendor and character and Holy Ghost dimension, yeah. a spiritual yeah. realm yeah. called love, yeah. and that it just increases more and more, and that we find ourselves knowing this love of Christ which passes knowledge, and they're being filled with all the fullness of God to know the love of God, to dwell in the love of God. He that dwells in love dwells in God. This whole dwelling place, this habitable place of communion and fellowship with the Lord that is constantly being challenged and constantly being threatened by all these other things that are within the context of relationship that has a real impact upon us because we're just insecure, which is another synonym or word for fear which is supposed to have no dominion over us seeing we've been delivered from the bondage of fear and have been given the spirit of the Son whereby we cry, God is my dad. What are, you about? what are you talking about? I'm not concerned with all of those other things. I don't need you to constantly be telling me that you love me. I'm certain. The development, of, the development, the splendor to say, wow, Lord, look at this fruit of love that you produced in me. Oh, Father, this is so good. And he's saying, yeah, there's more. He said, let the, water, let the water of my word soak deep into you. But you participating in it and not responding to those people who persecute you or those people who hate you or those people who talk bad against you. Listen, if you didn't have, if anybody, if you decided, anybody who's ever talked bad and bad against me, I am not going to have any relationship with, then you would be all by yourself alone on an island. Get over it. Everybody's probably talked bad about you, except for me. <laughs> And all those people who are in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. I might have thought bad about some of you. And, it's, and it, was, it was thinking bad and on good terms. Why? On, why? Why? They take a hold of the flow of heaven. Why? Why are they stuck in their pond? Why are they stuck in their pond? And what happens is the pond will turn into a cesspool of life quickly. I can prove it. I said a pond will turn into a cesspool of life quickly. It will become uninhabitable. A pond will become uninhabitable quickly. Quickly. Nothing could exist in it but frogs. And skeeters. <laughs> Mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, could I run back there, tackle them, put them in a headlock, <laughs> and wrestle them down to bring change? Huh? Could I grab them by their shirt, hold them up, and say, Smile! <laughs> Rejoice! Let the river of God flow forth from you. Yeah. And the Lord says, no, you can't do it. I don't do that. <laughs> do it to me, the Lord. Do it to me. Yes. Yes. The joy is found in participating with God. If I participate with God, if I move with him, if I, if I worship him, if I speak his word, if I'm found doing those things which he's doing, that's where the joy is. I write these things unto you in the word. If you'll believe them, agree with them, and do them, then your joy will be full. But if you just read them and don't do anything with them, you're going to be sad. Sad or still. Because you're going to cast a, you know, a wishful eye upon that blissful place. Huh? And no and have no understanding as how 
to participate with him. That's terrible, isn't it? That's, that's the best of religion. That's the best of reading and, re and, 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 and hearing it without the doing it. Ha bo ste de ke sti te la manda ta ke te ista prate fust. Malan de bife de de malanka ma se zustest. Beve pre de ste kinde la ma fa fa na lele me kista. Menen de de te kinde rust prana no la minga. Te ki rishte dalo mungi lini mingi dalo. Ham bleve te ste ya na munga reste di se linga lor ro fut pre de ya. Har ramende le be de do lo moste ke. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Those things that the Spirit of the Lord produces are, des are those desires that He has. The hunger and the, you know, to, well, it's, 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 it's advanced beyond the hunger. The state of being. Hunger is a desire to have a state of being, a place. To have something. It's actually rather the state of being, having it, possessing it, where no evil desires are there. The fruit of the Lord, the fruit of righteousness, the love for the things that belong to Him is just fully developed in my life. And you know what? In many respects, for the most part, I see that here among God's people. And, and I praise God for the areas of which I see the display among God's people of prophecy, of tongues, interpretation of tongues, because I know a lot of places where we will, supposedly they have been a move of God, but there's no tongues and no interpretation of tongues. Well, what's up with that? Because that's not the display of the church. That's not the church Jesus described. There, there's no... There's no there's not what God described in terms of you may all prophesy one by one and through the prophecy of one by one, people's hearts are revealed and they fall down in the midst of you, in the midst of the church and say God is in this place. That is a description of what the move of God actually looks like. And you don't, you don't you, that's really, by and large, it's pretty desolate. You know that, it's like if you, if you understand that as the garden, you know that that is the display of the garden, well then a lot of, or what goes on in the church looks rather like a wilderness. If that's the display of the garden, if that's what it looks like where the water is breaking forth and the rivers are flowing and the springs of water, you know, <laughs> are being, are, are being, are issuing forth, then, then we're, we're all standing in, in a position of great need and we have to recognize, wait a minute, God has commanded it, so we've got to understand the influences and the powers of darkness that are resisting us and know how then to be able to break through those things and lay hold upon that which God has freely given, to be able to drink that which He's supplied so that the rivers of God can go from the inside, as it were, to the outside and begin to be manifested and displayed in the way that God ordained it to be. I mean, his church is supposed to have three, at least two to three prophets in it. Because that's the way Paul, Paul said, you know, let, let the prophets judge, two or three. So there's a minimum of two or three prophets. That's the office of the prophet. In verse Corinthians chapter 14, when is the last time you've been in a church where there was at least two or three? And that's minimum. There's probably more than that. There was at least two or three prophets because in the midst of the church is the gifting and the mantle of this glorious garden and this wonderful glorious church that Christ Jesus has brought forth when he brought, when he brought forth this wonderful flow of divine power and glory, this restoration, this new creation, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon all flesh, those who will participate with God. You look at all that is there in the display of God's goodness and God's glory where he's established in the church, apostles. It's very few places you go where you find in the church an established apostle, a prophet. There, there being the gift of teaching, there being the gift of miracles. It's there. It's a mantle in the house. Amen. Tongues, interpretation of tongues. Okay. Well, praise God. You know, there are the churches where, you know, you've got one or two or three people to do, doing, flowing in that. I mean, I, I praise the Lord the last Sunday night that I was here. Well, last Sunday night, the, the number of different people that came up and prophesied the tongues and the interpretations of tongues that were here. 
Well, you've got to just, I, I praise the Lord for what happened this morning and the prophecy that came forth this morning and the tongues and interpretation of tongues that came forth this morning and the wonderful display of his love and the display of his joy. I, I praise God for the, the wonderful working of, of the gifts of healing, miracles, de, 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 words that were decreed and prophesied that were established by God when they were spoken. I praise yeah. the Lord for those things. Yeah. The Father wants it. Father, it can be in a greater display. Amen. It can bring in a greater Amen. abundance. Amen. Because it's, it's not like a little stream. It's not just like a you know, couple of glasses of, of Holy Ghost you know, manifestation. It's rivers of Holy Ghost Amen. manifestation. Amen. It's all the fruits you can eat. All the fruits and vegetables you can eat. All the love and the joy and the miracles and the signs and the wonders and, and the goodness of God and the gifts of the Spirit and the working of His mighty power, all the stuff. All the blessings, all the spiritual blessings, all that you can eat. Stuff in your pockets and take home with you. Bag it up. This is what's available and to not have it is to refuse it or somehow have something that is literally blockading you from all that God has freely given. And tonight in the name of Jesus, it comes to an end. So that everybody in this place how is it the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is? How is it that every one of you have this manifestation of the Holy Ghost? Every one, every single one, every, somebody says, just one for this and one for that. No, he said, every single one of you has the manifestation of the Spirit. Every one of you has a tongue. Every one has an interpretation. Not one or two has a tongue. One or two have an interpretation. One or two have a healing. Or one or two have a miracle. Well, that would be good. And what churches are doing that? That, that's, something of, that's something that belongs to the 40s and the 50s. So somebody's got to say, wait a minute. I'm going to enter into this realm. I'm not going to live in the wasteland. I'm going to go back into the ancient, ancient ruins and, 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 and dwell in the ancient dwellings. Which would become ancient dwellings which would become ruins. But God has now built up a glorious church through this wonderful work of divine power and grace. I want to lay hold of it. I want to know it. I want to understand it. My soul demands it. No, we demand many, and, I, and I'm not just talking to people, and you've got to understand, I'm not just talking to people here, people are watching on the web and watching YouTube. We demand the programs of men. We demand an organization that men think are respectable, that other people in the world will relate to. God said the world cannot relate to anything that he's doing. That the world cannot receive anything that the Holy Ghost is doing. And yet we want to participate with things that the world can relate to. Thus, we literally abdicate our position in God and reject God the Holy Ghost to accept another spirit that the world can relate to. A display of something the world can relate to cannot be the gospel. And if we would dedicate ourselves to that which God revealed and manifested through Christ Jesus, that we can have the same kind of results that George Whitfield had, that Charles Finney had, that John G. Lake had, that, that Mariah Woodworth Etter had, that other people who gave themselves completely over to another realm. Yeah. When you look in Ezekiel chapter 47, you see the river of God flowing out of his temple. But people, and, and yeah, that has, that has value and it has meaning. Listen, it has value and it has meaning in the, what we would call the millennial temple. But that's not really what's being said. What's being said is God is describing the new creation when we, as his dwelling place, become the temple that he himself dwells in. That is a reality of what's already taken place. People want to just take these things and, and that Joel said, that Ezekiel said, that Isaiah said, that Jeremiah said, and, and that, that Haggai said, that Amos said, that Malachi said, and they want to try to lock them in into various disposition, dispensations in God. No, God's talking about a new creation, the day, the age of redemption, the day of which Christ Jesus, the Messiah, comes, bears our sins away, raises from the dead, becomes sovereign king over everything. Amen. The day has come. 
We the temple. Out of our, out of our belly, out of our life is supposed to come forth from the river. When Jesus said in John chapter 7, out of your belly, out of your innermost being, out of your emotions, your passion shall come forth rivers of living water. As the scripture says, he's talking about Isaiah, these verses of scriptures that I read tonight. 35, 5 and 6. 53, 58. Ezekiel 47. I mean, fundamentally, that's, it's got to be understood relationally. It's got to be understood within the context of our lives and, our, and who we have been made in Christ Jesus and this new creation that God brought forth. This reestablishment, as it were, of what he purposed Adam to be in something greater than that. Because now you and I aren't created in Adam. We created in God, Amen. made flesh. Amen. You want to be restored back to Adam, not me. No. I'm going with God. Amen. I'm going with Jesus. You're going with Jesus. You're going with Jesus. There's not a lot of people who, you know, barge into the, into the morgues and says, I'm, I'm raising the dead today. And it needs to change. Yes. Amen. I'm going to participate with God's growth and God's building and God's development and God's planting and God's husbandry to be able to step over into a realm of participating in the signs and the wonders and the miracles of laying hold on that glorious display of God's divine power to go downtown San Diego to the morgue. It's a city morgue where there's hundreds of bodies that laid inside of those drawers and command every one of them to get up. But you've got to start doing it and you've got to start participating with it. You've got to, you've got to go through, as it were, the shame and the agony of defeat. Amen. So I said, what would you do if you prayed for people and nobody got healed? I would pray more earnestly. Because I'm not going to be a coward and run and retreat and try to make something up out, something different because of some experience that I've had or something that some angel teaches. I'm not going with false doctrine. I'm going with his doctrine. I'm going to do exactly what he said. He said, do it like this. This is what messianic age looks like. This is what it looks like when waters are broke forth of the wilderness. This is what it looks like when there's springs of water in the desolate places. The blind see the deaf hear. The lame leap like the playing deer. The, 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 the dumb sing. The tongue of the dumb sing. That's what we're going to have. But you have to pray. You have to move into that realm. You've got to go into that realm that threatens you, that says, no, you can't have this, that no, it's not going to work. I said, oh, you can't put that pressure on yourself to drive you to drink. Well, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's no pressure. It's an opportunity. Oh, I'm an unprofitable servant. I mean, I, it doesn't matter. I mean, you stand in the fire. If it, you stand in a fire of rejection. And, and, and persecution, if you pray and nothing happens and you stand in a fire of uh, being glorified and praised and honored when something happens. Both are fire. This is the worst fire. The other fire is a light fire. This is a hot, hot fire. And if you can't stand the lesser fire, you're not ready for the hotter fire. <laughs> uh, if you're going to take the shame, you're going to take the glory too. Uh, if you're going to take, take the rejection, are you listening to me? Yeah. It's all be, it's, Lord, hide me away. Hidden thee, O God. Hidden in thee, O God. Hidden in thee, O God. That's where I want to be. Amen. That place of your glory. Amen. To be persecuted with you. To be an outcast with Amen. you. To bear the reproach with you. Amen. To bear the shame with you. Amen. To be despised and rejected with you, Amen. hidden away, and to be glorified with you, to be justified with you, to be exalted with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True. You need anything different? Yes. Let God have his way. If you look at something and say, look what I did. If that's even anywhere close to your thinking realm, cast it down. 
Just look what he's done. Just look what he's done. I, I can't fix anybody. I can't in any way lay claims to anyone with respect to successes or failure. It's not that at all. That's all God's work and your response to his work. All I do is just declare his word. I have no, I have no, I have no power over you, sway over you. No, neither do I want it. No power, control of your faith. Neither do I want it. I mean, I mean, I've got to be careful about even the attitude of, oh, they go to my church. Especially if you're, you know, doing something in the kingdom. <laughs> like I'm laying some kind of claim that it's because of me. Oh, you better watch out now. You're touching the realms of the anointing, touch the realms of glory, you're going to get smacked. Yeah. Yeah. Just hide me away, Lord. Yeah. Hide me away. Huh? Something starts bombarding you, some condemnation, some shame, some guilt. Just say, hide me away. Hide me away. Just hidden away. Huh? It just helps. It just stops, it just stops the whole thing right there. You don't have to go through inner healing or outer healing or another rebuking session. Just hide me away, oh God. Hidden away. Living in Jesus, dwelling in God. This was supposed to be the short part of the me 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 message. And I'm hard, having a hard time getting through the short part so I could get to the long part. And I thought it was not going to be as lengthy of a meeting. That doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Just shows you that I didn't plan anything here. And judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. And righteousness remain in the fruitful field. Righteousness over here in the fruitful field. Huh? Yeah. Judgment out there in the wilderness. Yeah. Righteousness over here in the fruit. Yeah. Wilderness or fruitful field? Which are you? Wilderness or fruitful field? Huh? A desolate place or the planting of the Lord? Huh? A desert or the Garden of Eden? The Zion of the Lord. Beauty or ashes? Beauty. Beautiful. Oh, how beautiful are the feet of them. He beautifies the meek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to wake up in the morning maybe with some puffed eyes and look pretty bad and shock myself in the mirror. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to go to praise God and just say, Lord, you beautified the meek. You beautified me with your salvation. Ah, you gave me the oil of joy. Morning starts coming along. Morning, not in the morning, but morning depression. The morning is glorious. But morning Depression, sorrow, disgruntledness. Oh, no, 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 no. You say, all oh, a joy is mine. All oh, a joy is mine. I, I, I only yield to the oil of joy. I only yield to that which God is doing because he's walking in the, his garden and I hear the sound of his voice. I hear him singing and it's going, woo. And he says, and all my delights are with the sons of men. And all my heart is set on you. My turn and I respond, and all my heart set upon him. Amen. And whatever was harassing you, was trying to discourage you or depress you or disappoint you is gone. Amen. It's like shadows fleeing away from the rising of the morning sun. Uh -huh. Take heed unto the word of God until the day star arise. Take heed unto the word of God because what's going to happen in taking heed unto the word of God, the sun is going to rise 
and begin to shine. You might, you might not be able to see very well. Your visibility, your visibility might only be 10 feet because it's so dark outside. Hmm? Then the dawn starts coming. You see a little bit further. But when the sun comes up, huh? Your visibility just went from 20 feet to, you know, 2,000. And more depending on how high up you are. If you're up high enough, you can see for miles and miles. There's places that you can go and you can look out. And if you realize you're seeing for hundreds of miles because you know that that other mountain set of mountain peaks is several hundred miles away and you can see them. They look a little closer than they actually are, don't they? Because you're up high enough in this place in Christ Jesus, walking in the beauty of the revelation of who he is and what he said about you and me. You get to see there. That's the light. His word is light, not a little, just a little lamp. We're not, under the, we're not in the Old Testament with a little dim, walking around with a little candle. <laughs> Birthday candle train. Where am I going now? The day star. The sun. The sun has risen. The sun has risen. The sun has risen. To life in the... I, I'm not grumpy and upset and always trying to compete and being all defensive. I was once a wilderness with those briars and those thorns. Now I'm a fruitful garden, living over in abundance of joy, in abundance of peace. I got all these things popping up, all these different servers wanting me to say yes to them. It's happening all the time in our lives, spiritually. Servers coming up and saying, select me. Yeah, nothing, nothing to do. I'm trying to read the word. The server's popping up. It's very spiritual. It's true. It's happening. It happens. Huh? You need to cancel every time. Cancel. It's a beautiful. Cancel, 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 cancel. Because I'm focused on the word. I want to hear about what you've got to offer me. What I can join. Huh? I'm trying to remember which one I was in. Oh, yeah, I know where I'm at. I'm still back in... I, 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 for, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm slow. Isaiah 32. I like to be slow. I want to be slow with the Word of God. This fruitful garden, he's poured out His Spirit upon high. The wilderness is a fruitful place. Good, good to keep you up in the context. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. Hoo -hoo. Huh? The judgment still dwells on the wicked. Ah, but righteousness remains in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness, ooh, I got this peace. Like mine got this peace that passes understanding. His peace rules my heart and my mind. And, and the proof that His peace rules my heart and my mind. Uh, it's songs and hymns and spiritual songs, hallelujah, and thanksgiving. People, if you can turn on your television and watch all of this high throttle murder, destruction, huh, and desolation, something's wrong with your spirit. If you're not grieved and torn, you've been living in turmoil and strife and hell to join in on that. And you're all turned on and excited about, you know, all this murder and killing and death and destruction. Goodness gracious. And cussing and screaming and hollering and fussing and fighting. I mean, you turn that on? You're supposed to do the up. You're supposed to turn that off. You're supposed to turn that off. That is the wilderness. Hello. That is the, that is the desolate places. That's the places of the dragon and of the frogs and all that other stuff. You know what? That belongs to the wilderness. Even frogs won't live in the wilderness. They're going to be in the, in, the, in the cesspool of life. On the edge of the wilderness kind of thing, where there are no springs. That's a pond, no spring. Hmm. Hmm. 
Watch Old Yeller or something. <laughs> you know. Huh? I mean, if you got to watch something, come on. Let it have some life to it. Let it have some joy. Let it end good. <laughs> My people shall dwell in peaceful habitation. Peaceable habitation. And this is where, can you hear me? Can you hear God? My people should dwell in peaceable habitation. There is a place of communion and fellowship with them that has absolutely none of the, the factors and the qualities of this world. It doesn't impose upon you strife and hate and violence and torment and dis destruction and shame and condemnation and depression and turmoil and discouragement. Yuck! This death! Come over here. Amen. Come over here into this communion with the Holy Ghost. I want it tonight. Uh, let the Spirit of the Lord reveal to you the reality of what it means to walk with Him. So that it isn't something that is elusive to you, but it's something very real to you. So you can participate with Him. Are you going to be tempted? Is, there, is, is Satan going to come along and tell you all kinds of weird and crazy things that, about you? Because he believes he rules over you and you're twisted and, and, is, and, is, and is demonic as he is? Yeah, he's going to try to put that on you. <laughs> he's going to say, he, out of you, you foul spirit of hell. Yep. And he's gonna, is he going to bring things that he's going to try to play on, you know, form a conversation and, and holy desires and twist them to make them unholy? Sure. But what are you going to do? You'll be kept by this power of God because you want communion and fellowship with the Lord. There's got to be a, there's got to be a, a separation. There's got to be a clear display that Christ Jesus reigns today. Huh? That he is, that his, that the temple of the Lord is with us, that we are his temple, that out of our life, out of this temple where he dwells, flows forth these rivers, and in this moment of Edea, and Malano Mombredea, Hala do Cosifretea, and in Mombledea, Nanishikaya, and wherever it flows, there comes forth these trees with healing in their leaves. The, huh? The fruits of every good thing and every pleasurable thing. Yes. The trees of righteousness, the power of God, the authority over sickness and disease, and every demonic thing and every torment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hallelujah. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. That sounds pretty good. Yes. Assurance forever. That means no more uncertainty. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Talk about the assurance of the believer. Yeah. Huh? Yep. This is what this is the package deal. This is the offer. This is the result. This is the fruit father's tending. This is the fruit you and I are supposed to be tending. And my people should dwell in peaceable habitations and sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. I don't give myself to that. I'm not going to go over there and yells from hell. I'm going to shout to the Lord. I'm not going to get over there fuss in the fight. And he's coming at us right, left, and center. It is. I was driving to church tonight. And, 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 and this guy sped up past me and stops in front of me. He was behind me. If he wanted to get in my lane, hello, just pull over in the lane behind me. No, he's got to speed up 
get in front of me, and then slow down. Huh? He just got to say, thank you, Lord. I hope you're doing okay up there in the car. Lord bless them. You gotta be, it's coming at you in all various different sorts and sizes and shapes. From the things that the world and circumstances and situations to try to impose upon you and you just got to be, decide that your shop's not open for that anymore. Amen. You're not dealing in those bads. Amen. You notice I didn't say goods. You're not dealing in those <laughs> bads. Uh -huh. You're only dealing in the goods. There's a fellowship and a communion with the Holy Ghost, and that person, the Lord was highlighting them to you to intercede for their salvation. That's why they pulled in front of you and slowed down. Huh? And if you can't get their name, you could write down their license plates and say, Father, I bring before you X, Y, T, 4, 3. In a black Mercedes. Yes, come on now. Start getting some information and insight from heaven. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. You in fellowship with God. You yeah. as ambassadors. Amen. God is beseeching the world through you. This isn't about you being in first place and losing your cue. Isaiah 52, 9. Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places. For the Lord hath comforted his people and he's redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. And the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God, a fruitful habitation, a garden of Eden, the dwelling places of the Most High, the habitation of God, the place where His signs and wonders and glory and all, the, all those things that belong to His majesty and splendor of His love and His goodness. I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of you are, are seen to be a preacher manifested to be a preacher. When you sit down by someone, they're going to go, you're a preacher, aren't you? Amen. I could tell. I promise you, if you sit down like this, all disgusted, I can't believe the service we get around here. And nobody's going to mistake you for no preacher. I can't believe it. It's one problem after another. I run, run, run. Because your mouth is over in another realm. It has nothing to do with the rivers. It's nothing to do with the wellsprings. Come on, people, let's just participate with what God's given and watch what He'll do. Watch what He'll produce. Let's participate with what God has given and watch what He will produce. Quit allowing anything that belongs to a former conversation, a former lifestyle, those things, the circumstances, culture, the world would impose upon you have nothing to do with it. Give yourself completely over to the Holy Ghost. Come dwell in Him. Come dwell in Him. Come dwell in Him. Every one of us, every one of us want to participate with what God has commanded. He has, com he has he, we have been given power from on high to demonstrate the glory and the majesty of the one who raised up from the dead. We've been given an authority that when we say to the blind see that it happens immediately, we've been given that authority and, it's, and we want to understand how to function in that authority that when we speak it happens because Jesus was doing all the time and it's a display of the, of the messianic age, it's a display that he is God manifested in the flesh that redeemed us, who died and rose again, who's exalted above all things, whose name is above every name. We want to be able to speak to the crippled and immediately they walk. We don't want to have a protracted time, a delay. We want to understand how to move into this relationship that God has called. Because listen, He has placed it all within the framework of relationship, people. We, we got to get this concept of, of ministry and business and success and all the other interests completely removed from uh, the, 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 the equation. <laughs> Well, we're called to be and do. It's going to be about relationship because in that context, we understand that this is where we ask the Father and whatever we ask Him, He does it. This is where Father's display of His power and His glory is manifested through you and I, where this fellowship results in He, he, he Himself 
being in us. And He Himself, the Father Himself, the Father doing the work. And I just want to close with this because I just want to grab you with it and leave you with this and so that you quit being you. So that you won't be a barren wasteland Amen. of misery and defeat. Amen. But you'll be the habitable places of God. A fruitful garden where God's walking around. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this. As Jesus describes it in John chapter 14, he says, if you don't believe me, my words, then believe me for my work's sake, because it is not me that does it, but it's my Father who dwells in me. He does the work. And then he says, he says, it's my Father who dwells in me. He does the work. And he says, and anyone who believes these works which I do, shall he do also in greater works than these. And he implies by that that Father will dwell also in us and also do the work. And he brings that up to a place. He builds that up to the place starting there in John 14, 11. See that? Right there in John 14, 10, rather. He builds it up to the place in John 14, 20. And in John, by the time he gets to John 14, 20, he lets it out. He said, if you'll just obey me. He said, if you'll obey me, if you'll just love me if you come into this because he's talking about fellowship he's talking about a relationship so it's always going to be described on on the in the terms of love he's going to, it's going to be intimate it's got to be intimate it's got to be intimate it's got to be kissy huggy fellowship love just i, I don't want to be anywhere else i'm with you i'm with you father in this, yes, and in this, he says, then my Father and I, we are going to come and we're going to make our dwelling in you so that you and I can say yeah. that Father dwells in me, that the only begotten Son dwells in me. And he's already made it clear that the Holy Ghost would dwell in us so that we have the triune God. We have God the Father, God the, the Son, and God the Lord, and God the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. I mean, come on, people. Yeah. I know this is, you know, yeah. seems unimaginable, yeah. but if you can just understand that Father, God Almighty, the Sovereign, the Eternal One is living on the inside of you right now. Yeah. He wants to begin to function in our lives in such a way that He takes control and it's Him doing the work. And you know it. Amen. And you don't have to do anything. Yeah. But just let Him do what He wants to do. Yeah. Because you've learned to yield to him. You've learned to submit to him. You can't learn to yield to him through religion. You can only learn to yield to him, to him through relationship. You cannot learn to yield to him through relationship unless you take hold of his word and you agree with him and you move with him and you participate with the activity of the Holy Ghost. Because he dwells, that's why John says in 1 John 3, 23, he dwells in us by the Spirit which he's given to us because he's saying right there, he's saying because you walk in the Spirit, because you live in the Spirit, because you move and depend upon the Holy Ghost, there you are finding yourself functioning and, 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 and participating with, functioning and participating with Almighty God, the Father. That's pretty big. <laughs> We just took garden to another level. We just took water breaking forth, rivers coming out, well springs and desolate places to a whole nother dimension. A whole nother dimension. Because now we went from waters to the Father, God Almighty, eternal, everlasting. He's not coming. He's not, he's not gonna dwell in a shack. He's not gonna hang out in the wilderness. Walk around the wilderness. He created a garden of paradise to have fellowship and communion with man that he created in his image and his likeness. Quit feeling bad about yourself. In fact, quit feeling anything about yourself. Quit feeling good about yourself. Rather, deny yourself. <laughs> so that you can find your whole existence in Him. Yeah. Your whole life in Him. Yeah. Jesus said in John 14, 17. And I want you, I'm going to give you some time to open your Bibles there because some of you are just looking at me. 
and, I, and, and, and I'm doing slow tonight. I'm not doing fast. I'm just waiting on a greater display of the power and the glory of Jesus in this to the church. His glorious church. You might think of yourself as an outsider, but in the name of Jesus Christ tonight, you start seeing yourself as an insider. Yes. You might think of yourself as someone who's just not participating. You need to have an encounter. Yes. And let everything begin to change. Father will establish you. Yes. He will perfect the things that concern you. Yes. He will preserve you unto that day. Yes. He who began a good work in you shall finish it. Yes. You can opt out, but why would you ever do that? You can quit, but why would you ever do that? He present you faultless on that day. without rebuke, unblameable. He will count you worthy and fulfill all the good pleasure of his will with the work of faith and power. That's what he's doing. Don't be restricted or limited to something that the word of God did not say. Let the sick say, I'm healed. You know, theology could not understand, lingu linguists could not understand why God was always talking in the past tense when it hadn't been done yet. So they came up with this whole notion of something that they call the Vav Conversive just simply so that they could take the past, God always talking in the past tense and make it in the future tense or the present tense, especially, specifically in the future tense. Because he's already said it's done. Sarah's had a child and his name is Isaac and he hasn't even been born yet. <laughs> no, no, it can't be that way. Sarah shall have a child and his name should be Isaac. Isaac. That's not what the literal reading is. Sarah's had a child and his name is Isaac. Well, she hasn't had a child yet, so we've got to have the Bob conversive so that we can make the past tense the future tense. God's always calling those things that are not as though they were. And now how about what God has called exist and, and, and what God has said exists and what God says is. What about that now, you saying it is? Yeah. It is. Yes. I know of a preacher who was prayed for by everybody. Wigglesworth, I mean, you name them. F.F. Bosworth, it just went on and on. The Richie, Brother Richie, just... Everybody moving in faith and power at the time. There were so many people. Mariah Woodward, Fetter, every, all these guys. And he, had, and he was dying of tuberculosis. Suddenly he realized that he was already healed and he got healed. <laughs> when he was finally dying, after everybody prayed for him, and, nobody, and he did get healed. Because it was for him to receive it and say, it's done. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, look at this problem and this is, you know, finally he said, oh, I'm, I'm healed. Okay, I'm done. It's good. Yeah, I received it. It's already done. speaks volumes about all the things that God has already established in our life that we're still waiting for it to happen. Yeah. You're, very, you're very fortunate and blessed tonight. Because yeah. yeah. you're in the glorious church. Yeah. Which Jesus has presented unto himself yeah. without spot or blemish. Yeah. In other words, perfect. perfect. You're in the glorious, perfect church. Yeah. <laughs> Which Jesus purchased with his own blood. People don't realize that see, there's sometimes when people come and they think, well, you just, did you hear what he said? They had no idea. I was just quoting scripture. <laughs> So that's why I've got to slow down more. That was actually uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32, in case you didn't know it. 
But let me read this verse of scripture. Can anybody still be unhappy after all the good news that I've given you for the past? <laughs> I mean, I look around, I go, what? I, um, do I still see somebody sad and downcast? You know what God's going to say? You listen to me. He'll say, all the fearful, all the unbelieving, out. Judgment's in the wilderness. Righteousness over be here in the fruitful place. If, I, if you're not fruitful place tonight and you feel like you're a wilderness, we got the conversion. We have the conversion factor. Amen. To change you from wilderness to Garden of Eden. From ashes to beauty. From, from defeated to victorious. From cast down to an overcomer. Amen. From sick and diseased to healed. Amen. From bondage to set free. From imprisoned to glorious liberty. Amen. From death to life. From light to from darkness to light. Amen. From you to Jesus. No, 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 no. The redeemed of the Lord is returning, come singing unto Zion. Yeah. And everlasting joy is on their face. Yeah. And there is no special clauses. Oh, if you're going through such and such a thing, we're going to all sit around in, in, in sorrow with you. <laughs> Jesus cast out the mourners. He cast them out and said, get the mourners out of here so we can do a miracle. Cast out the wailers and the mourner, mourners and the, you know, the people, hired people to cry. So we can have a miracle. It's a beautiful song to sing, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard your voice. And I humbly come to thee. Consecrated now. So many people have sang that song with no heart in it, no meaning in it. They just sang the song. A revival song, a song that was born, born in the fires of awakening. And the Lord has listened to them speak out meaningless words. They've never, they've never believed the good news, the good report. They've never believed in the new creation. They've never believed that God has taken the sh shambles of their life, the ruin of their life, and raised up the ancient dwelling place and made us habitable, his tabernacle, the place where he delights to dwell. We fellowship our, in His love and His joy and His goodness. Where sorrow and sadness has no power over us or dominion over us. Tonight, people, come and drink of that which is going to result in you being able to be a witness that Christ Jesus has transformed your life and changed Amen. your heart. Amen. Taking you from a place that is desolate, a place that is lifeless and filled you with his own spirit, his own glory, and given to you all that he has as a good father who delights to give you all that he has, to give you his kingdom. Who's given to you the one who he's always used to create and bring forth those things which his word demands.
the Holy Ghost who personally takes all that Jesus has and all the Father has and reveals it to you as you're there waiting on Him, as you're, there to, as you're here tonight listening. There are people in this place that you've actually, and listen to me right now on the web, you've actually allowed the voice of the enemy of defeat and of doubt and unbelief and of accusation to be stronger and more effective in your life than the voice of God, the Holy Ghost. When will you exalt the living God above the demonic realms? When will you exalt the words spoken to us by the only begotten Son of God above all the, all the words of men and of demon spirits? Tonight, you choose. Tonight, can you, can you walk around all downcast and defeated and say this is what it looks like to be born again? No. And be anything less than a false witness. And I tell you, a false witness is an abomination to God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. People say, well, uh, uh, you know, the witch and the sorcerer and the homosexual is an abomination to God. Yes, it is. But the false witness is an abomination to you. You say, well, I can't be happy and rejoice and praise God tonight because, you know, I tripped up and sinned yesterday. Then you don't believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. And tonight you need to believe in the blood that will wash away your sin and restore you and make you whole again. You say, well, you don't understand of the disappointment and the things that I'm feeling. Then you don't believe in the power of the living God, the Holy Ghost, who comes and brings something far more influential than circumstances can bring. And that a joy that is so full of glory and unspeakable that it's supposed to eclipse any bad thing you've ever been through. You can't sit here and listen to all of this and then, and then look like you're passing a kidney stone. This is, this is, this ain't right. This is ain't right. This is ain't right. It ain't right. And the zeal of the Lord is eating me up. The seal of his house is his house is a glorious house. His vine is a fruitful vine. That which Jesus has made whole and redeemed that work which he has done. It's a complete work. And he's deserving of somebody to show forth his glory. Somebody to show forth his great, so great of salvation. Somebody to participate with that new creation. Somebody to sound out that which the divine has brought into our life. You can't. You can't. Moya Dinineta. We brought to bear everything that God has given us tonight. We've worked harder than we've ever had to work in mass evangelists and crusades tonight. You can't sit and listen to the word of God and not respond. I don't care how many times you fail, he'll forgive you more. But if you're not if you're not willing to show it, if you're not willing to receive it, if you're not willing to rejoice in it, then his work is not effective for you. You're gonna to have to get over yourself. You're gonna to have to get over your silly self. Huh? See, I've made an improvement. It's that I developed from stupid to silly. You've got to get over your silly self. Just thought I'd point that out. So I'm pointing out the growth of maturity in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm less frustrated with God's people. Even though I'm zealous for Him, I'm jealous for His namesake. He, has, he deserves better. Amen. And because He's given us the best. Amen. Uh, and all we've got to do is yield to Him. Yes. He deserves better than you and me because He's given us the best and it's time for us to start living in the best. Yes. Yes. 
He's not going to get me. He's got all of me. I'm living in him now. I'm living his life. For me to live is Christ. For you to live is Christ. Yeah. Say, well, how can you say for you, me to live is Christ when I failed, when I stumbled up? Oh, my goodness. That's just the mercy and the grace of God, isn't it? Because I'm going to tell you right now, you get hungry and desperate. You get, you get, you get sincere and committed. And what Father is going to do, you'll see he'll perfect everything that concerns you. I promise you, he, he, he will gain a good work and you will finish it. He that called you shall also establish you. He that spoke it shall also perform it. That should be enough to be excited about. Yeah. That should be, that should be enough. That should be enough to praise him earnestly. Huh? Man, you can have a good relationship with the Lord failing all the time if you're able to grab a hold of his forgiveness and his mercy, but it gets so much, so, so much better when you start living in his obedient, as an obedient son. I mean, you can have a joyful fellowship being a disobedient child of God who's constantly receiving his mercy and forgiveness. But oh, it's so much better when you become an obedient son and daughter. Yeah. Hallelujah. And start enjoying his mercy and forgiveness. The sweet fellowship and communion with him. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to die. I'm gonna try to be done. Jesus says to verse 16, he says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another one just like me, another teacher, leader, guide, comforter, helper, person to strengthen you, show you how model for you the things of him and show you how to function in that which God has provided for you that ye, and he will abide with you forever. He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Very important. People can't receive the Holy Ghost because they're holding on to cleaving to the world and won't let go. God brings trans, God, God himself, by the power that he works on our behalf, delivers us from the kingdom of darkness, the world, translates us over into the kingdom of the dear son so that we can receive those things which are freely given to us by him. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive because it doesn't see him. Neither knows him. But you know him. Yeah. And he dwells with you. Yeah. And he shall be in you. So that takes care of the Holy Ghost in us. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. Temple of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 I will not leave you as orphans without a teacher. I will come to you yet a little while and the world sees me no more, but you see me. I see him. Because I live, you shall live also at that day when the Holy Ghost comes, he says. You shall know that I am in the Father. And you are in me, and I am in you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Tonight, right now, let tonight be your day. If it hasn't been your day, let tonight be your day. Don't let this be just, these, are, these words are spirit and life. This is the reign of heaven. This is, the, this is the rain. This is the word that goes forth out of his mouth. It's like the rain from heaven that comes upon the ground that brings forth the tree, that brings forth the herb bearing seed, that brings forth the bud and the fruit. Let God's, let God's planting be developed. Let God's planting and let God's seeds, as it were, grow and, and, and develop and bring forth and of all the abundance of those things which Father has commanded to spring forth. Look at all what it, look what all happened in a day. I figure it happened in an hour. Just read it. Huh? Read it. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Look at it. abundance, abundance here, abundance there. And it just came forth and it sprang forth in abundance. By a spoken word, just like this, is bringing forth abundance. Yes. Yes. Abundance. Abundance. Abundance right now. Abundance right now.
If you're not careful, disappointment, discouragement, adverse situations will come and have dominion over your mind and your thinking and will hold you in a prison and you'll never be freed to function in the glorious liberty of the sons of God. You'll be a prisoner to that. You'll never have the joy and the excitement and the confidence that you had at that first moment of believing. Oh, my joy and my confidence is greater. It's increasing. Come on, that's right. This is exactly what your response is supposed to be. Huh? Amen. We got one. I'm so glad you came to the meeting tonight. Hallelujah. It's increasing. Hallelujah. It's increasing. You're going to have to start speaking the word that goes forth out of his mouth. You've got to be a word that goes forth out of your mouth. You're going to have to start declaring his word and living by his word. Come on, you people. To be watered with his word, to be saturated with word, to be saturated with his spirit, to start thinking like God thinks. That's what his word has come forth for. So the Holy Spirit has come. And you know, John chapter 16, you've heard it so many times. You take that which belongs to the Lord Jesus. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would take that which belongs to me and all that the Father has is mine. And he will reveal it to you, will disclose it to you, will transfer it to you. This is a place of fellowship and communion. This is a place of the new creation and confidence. This is a place of assurance and faith. This is, a, this is not a place of doubt and unbelief and wondering when you're going to get there and how you're going to get there. It's a place of being, having a settled work of divine power of God in your life. The dwelling place of the Lord. I'm, 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 I'm that habitable place of the yes. Almighty God, that Amen. place where He dwells. Amen. The temple of the God. From my life flows out all those yes. good things. Amen. That is described coming forth from God Himself because He dwells in me. Amen. In me, in me He dwelleth. The Lord God dwells in me. It's a song from the 1700s. In my soul He dwelleth. My God He dwelleth in me. There's a revival of songs. People had a revelation. They stepped into something that they started participating with, and it wasn't just doctrinal ideas. Tonight, let God bring forth an abundance in your life. Yes. Amen. Tonight, let these words be something that produces within your life faith. Amen. Where there's faith, every miracle activity of God's power is being displayed. Yeah. The miracle of faith produces what God has spoken. Amen. Verse 21 says, he that, is, he that has my commandments, what I've said, he that takes a hold of what I say, just put it this way, he that takes a hold of those things which I've said and does them, keeps them, and says they're mine. He, this is the person who's in communion with me. This is the person that's in fellowship with me. This is the person who loves me, who's fallen in love with me. I've fallen in love with him. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. I love him so much because in his love he came and revealed himself to me. I've never seen him with my eyes naturally or handled him with my hands physically as those who wrote the epistles that we have. But the Holy Ghost has come and made him so real to me it's, though as, it's as though I have. I've been able to touch him in a deeper realm and I recognize him because I know his peace. I recognize him because I know his love. I recognize him because I know his joy. I know his presence. I can feel him. And it has such a far more profound effect than seeing someone. There's no one that I know, including the one that I love the most, my wife, that has such, whose presence has such a profound effect on me as this one whom I cannot see, whose name is Jesus. And the beautiful thing about it is the more I spend time with him, just alone with him, just in this place of 
communion and fellowship with him that is provided for me by the Holy Ghost himself. Who as I yield to him, he prays through me and he, and, he, and he sings through me and he gives thanks through me, both with the spirit and with the understanding also in that place, in that realm, that presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and that which he brings, his love and his joy and his peace that's always there when he, when he is present. It's always the token of my agreement with him and my recognizing, recognizing that the king is here, that the master is here. That the master dwells here. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing when I recognize that the master dwells here, I just recognize his presence and I begin to just thank him for his presence. That it intensifies. The manifest presence of God intensifies. Amen. And in there I just, and in that place of communion, that place of fellowship, I just fall deeper in love. I'm falling Amen. in love with him. Falling in love with him. Over and over again. Amen. Falling in love. Over and over. Over and over again. You get sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between the Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over again. Oh, how I keep falling in love with him. Over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between the Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over. But if you don't give yourself to this place, if you're preoccupied with all the interest of the world and what everybody else is saying is fun and it's a good time and all of its entertainment and all of its distractions, you're never going to know what I'm talking about. And you're going to always be fighting a foe that you can't ever defeat. But we need to say, listen, I'm just, I want to know you, Lord. I want to spend time with you. I want to, I want to give myself to just talking with you and fellowshipping with you and building up myself in my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give myself to the Word because I'm sanctified by the Word or set apart by the Word. The Word of God shows me how to be set apart. The Word of God sets me apart because the Word of God is constantly building me up and strengthening me and giving me an inheritance with all the saints in light. It's reminding me who I am. It's taking me into that place where God, the Holy Ghost, develops this, this wonderful fruit that He's looking for because I'm willing to dwell in Him and allowing His Word to dwell in me. That's where the communion takes me to where I ask whatever I will and Father does it. And this, that's what this is. Stand with me. Just go, go, go easy, musicians. Go easy. Don't get too loud on the bass. Don't get too loud on the drums. Just please go easy. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Here's Judas, here's Judas. Bless his heart. Not Iscariot, okay? <laughs> Lord, how is it that you're going to manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? How is it that you're going to appear to us and, and we're going to get to see you and talk with you and interact with you and communion with you and fellowship with you and hang out with you like we've been hanging out with you, but nobody else is going to be able to see you? How's this going to work? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. I want you to grab a hold of this. To keep it, to do it, to hearken unto it, to do it, to say it, lay hold on it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. This is, this, is the, this is the challenge because so many other things are vying for your attention, vying for your affection.
demanding that you obey it, demanding that you fall down and you worship, demanding that you bow your knee, demanding that you observe it first. Because after all, you won't be able to pay your bills and after all, you won't be able to have friends and after all, you won't be able to get where you're wanting to go and have the things that you want and, 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 and desire. It's demanding of you. So Lord said, no, 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 no. In the context of seeking first the kingdom, he's saying, listen, if you'll take, if you'll, if you'll understand this, he's talking to Judas. He's talking to one that is his apostle. He's looking at his apostle and he's saying, these are the conditions, apostle. And how much more for you and me? Yeah. Now, can you hear and understand why the, the apostle said, now, he said, look, guys, we don't have time to do that. We're going to give ourselves to continually to, to prayer and to yeah. the ministry of the word. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because there's a place of fellowship and communion with him where he's able to develop us and grow us and mature us and bring to pass all those things that have been planted in this garden of our lives. His planting. And, and, we, and even when I say that, I know that people hear it wrong because all they can think of is an ascetic lifestyle. No. It's a place of an abundance of life and joy. It's, 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 a, place of, of, it's a place of glory. It's a, it's a, it's a heavenly realm of, of more good things going on than you, than, you, than you have, that you can even conceptualize, that has been wrongly modeled, is wrongly identified. Mm. Oh God, oh God, I pray tonight that everybody standing here and everybody listening will not try to, to think through these things with their own imagination, but will just agree with you at the point of their understanding, they just accept, wait a minute, there's a fellowship and there's a communion. Jesus said, if you'll hearken into my word, if you'll lay hold of my word, he says this, if you'll hearken to my word, if you'll lay hold of my word, if you'll do simply do my word, my Father will love you. And we will come to any, any, and it, see, he says, he doesn't just say Judas, because if he would have just said Judas, then we might have thought, well, this is a special condition and a special opportunity that only the apostles had. But he said, he's, he says, and my Father will love him. So he opens it up to any man, any, at any time. And we will come to him, that person, any person, anyone who's willing to participate. If there is going to be a moving of the Spirit of the Lord, if there is going to be an awakening within the world around us, if there is going to be a shaking of the power of God in the lives of the lost. It has to happen in our lives first. And it isn't some crying, suffering sound of where you're trying to repent, get right with God. A howling at the moon. It's a beautiful sound. It's a joyous sound. It's a sound of freedom. It's a sound of liberation. It's a sound of waking up in the morning and now we are free and now we're empowered and now all that we have ever desired and ever wanted and beyond all that we could have ever asked is ours. I don't know. It's a spiritual liberation and a spiritual freedom and a spiritual riches before it is anywhere else in any other dimension of our life, physically, financially, materially. God, the Holy Ghost is laboring, wrestling with you to bring this forth. Yeah. Yeah. And tonight, God demands you to be different, yeah. Yeah. to speak different, to act different. God demands that you don't allow a frown to rule you anymore. A disgruntled disposition, a disappointed disposition, the ashes to be on your face anymore. No more ashes. No more Ash Wednesdays. What does it look like to be in love? 
What does it look like to be in love, huh? <laughs> Here it is. Hey, guys, go, go take care of this stuff. We got to pray. <laughs> See, it, it, it looks different than what you think. It's not just hard work. So we're in love. We need to spend some time with the Lord because we're going to go to the meeting tonight. The dead are going to raise to life again. Yeah. We got to spend some time up here in the Lord and build ourselves up in our most holy faith because the blind, everybody in the house that are bl is blind going to see tonight, probably 15, 20, 30 people, who knows? <laughs> this is the communion. This is the fellowship. Can you see it over here? Yeah. Yeah. We need to stand on the platform. <laughs> So many have lost their way. Very few have understand this place of communion. It's a beautiful thing. It's a joyous gift. It's an offering to the Lord. So wonderful. So holy, so acceptable. The distractions of life and the situations that demand your buyer for your attention, you say, ah, sorry, we're busy. 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 That's what it means to be built up in the most holy faith. That's what it means to love him, to, to come apart to a place, a solitary place alone with him, to commune with him. That's what prayer is about. It's not, it's not cutting yourself and agonizing. <laughs> so how wonderful. Oh, how glorious. Oh, how mighty. Oh, how majestic. Oh, how almighty you are. Come on, you're hearing me now. It's speaking out of the realms of a place where you're walking. You see yourself, every time you pray, you see yourself walking with Father in the paradise, yeah. in the Garden of Eden, in Zion, strolling up to the high places. And him saying, what do you think we should do? And you're telling him, well, Father, I think we should do signs and wonders and miracles like nobody's ever seen before. Amen. Amen. Father, I think we should do a display of power and glory that will shock them all. Father, I think that we should do a display of your faith and a display of your glory like it's never been seen before. And I just thank you for helping me and causing me to understand how to move with you in these things that go beyond anything that I've ever seen or have an ability to relate to after my own experience as you just begin to talk to him like this. And then the Holy Ghost comes and helps you. He says, no, 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 don't use those words. Use these. And he says, my father will love him and we will come unto him. Jesus says, we, my father and I will come. That's what happened to me. The Holy Ghost came into me. Father in Christ Jesus came into me. And the tabernacle of the Lord is with men. the dwelling places of the Most High and the fruitful places. <laughs> the paradise of God is in the midst of our life, our conduct, our behavior. How we think and then we act. And if we'll hear his word and desire his word, desire, desire his word. See, what we, when, we, when we hear that, we go, oh, we're supposed to do Bible reading. So what he's saying, desire my life-giving word, my word which is spirit and life, my word which will not return void unto me, the word by which I framed the heavens and the earth. I frame the world. My word, which is living and powerful, 
desire, the sincere nourishment of those things which proceed out of my mouth, which I said are certain. And does that mean, does that include Bible reading? Yeah, that's Bible reading. It's not Bible reading for the sake of some intellectual, you know, memory, whatever. It's for hearing God speak to say, this is mine. This is what he has given to me. This is what he has spoken. This is what he has called for. Therefore, I hearken and I agree with them and I say it's so. And, I, and if it's too big for me, I just simply say, be it unto me according to thy word. Just imagine Mary having an angel say, God's going to be born in you. <laughs> Power of the Most High shall love her salad you and that holy thing that shall be conceived in you shall be called the Son of God. And now she's got to go tell people that she's pregnant by God. <laughs> and nobody has a, look, come on. Be it unto me according to thy word is what she said. That's the proper response. Only can do this, Lord. Only you. Only you can do this, Lord. Tonight, why don't you let the Spirit of the Lord put upon you a crown of glory? Yes, Lord. <laughs> why, 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 why don't you let the Spirit of the Lord put upon you a crown of life? Tonight, why don't you let the Spirit of the Lord give you mantles of divine authority. A mantle of faith, the gift of faith. A mantle of miracles. A mantle of prophecy and revelation. So easy, the prophet lives on the inside, Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, my goodness. All prophets do is supposed to make known what the Father's in the Father's heart. Father's in my heart. And I have the Father's heart, and Father more than that dwells in me, and personally dwells in me. In me, the Lord dwelleth. In my soul, he dwells in me. See, the dynamics of it is this. Tonight, I'm speaking to those who are found. Tonight, God, this Holy Spirit is here to build up the body of Christ, to perfect you. And some of you are stuck at the points of your disappointment. You're stuck. But I have a tractor with you. I was standing in a room the other day as a pastor. This really a familiar sight to me. I'm just standing in a room and I'm looking out and I'm watching the cows come in. And I watched this cow. Step into the muck. And she thought she was stuck. She wasn't stuck. I knew she wasn't stuck. She thinks in her mind she's stuck. She sees, no! They stick their tongue out about that long and, oh! and then they, they sound like they're dying. And everything knows, every living creature knows that something is dying. So all the cows and all the animals, the dogs, everything, all came around investigating this dying. I'm going, I'm sitting there looking out the window going, you are not stuck and I am not coming out there to pull you out of the muck that you're not stuck in. <laughs> then I watched her lay down in it and I go, oh man. So I thought, well, I'll go get a lariat and then pull her out. No, 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 no. I'll scare her out of there. 
So when I hopped on the tractor and I come out with the big bucket, <laughs> she suddenly starts moving. <laughs> there was no need to pull her out. You're not stuck. Quit bellowing. Get up and start moving. You're not stuck. And I know the folks out at the ranch are laughing right now who were eyewitnesses to that. You're not stuck. You've got to be kidding me. Brad and Gabe were standing there and I'm going, You've got to be kidding me, man. Here, I'm trying to talk to this cow. That he, she can't hear me. And if you were stuck, we'll get you out. But this, you're not stuck. I just keep hearing over and over, move forward, move forward. And you see Elijah... Whenever he was supposed to go, go somewhere, there was always provision that the Lord had made for him, whether it was out in the wilderness and there was a stream that was just provision from the Lord. And as soon as Elijah was supposed to move again, the stream, dr the stream dried up. And the pool dried up because he was supposed to move. It was time for him to go and move forward to the next place to go. And so I just keep hearing in my spirit and, and, and that, 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 uh, that burning, that fire of look at when, it, when it, there's no more time for delay. When you don't see the provision, it's because you're, you're supposed to move forward. You're supposed to continue on. You're staying in yesterday's provision when God's called you into more provision, into higher provision. And so if you're seeing yourself as being stuck, it's because because you're supposed to move forward. The, the provision that the Lord gave that pool is now dried up. It is no longer, it's, it's become stink. It's become stinky, it's become old. It's not what God has for you now. That was yesterday's. Move forward, go forward, go more, go beyond. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Yes, Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say I'm healed. Let anyone who's uncertain say I'm certain. No longer be of a doubtful heart. Never, no longer be of a a double mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Siko toro bobo shi sita tada mene ke ipeshti. Mi mambra do bafata na ne kiste tisis. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Move forward. Move forward right now. Step out right now. Step out right now. Step out right now in Jesus' name. Step out right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Listen, I wanna pray right now for everybody who needs prayer. I don't care what it is for your family. You don't have to quit praying. You don't have to keep, you can just keep praying. I was just saying, I wanna pray for everybody right now who needs prayer, you need things going on in your life. You need change in your life. 
I'm especially wanting to pray for people who feel like you're stuck. You're not stuck. Don't quit praying. This is time for you to pray. This is time for you to be in the moving things of the Spirit. This is, listen, what we did was we spoke the word, now we receive. Now just go ahead and participate with what God spoke tonight with what's been delivered to you. Just go ahead and participate with it. Go ahead and say what Father has declared. Just say it's mine. Possess it. Possess it. Possess it. Possess it. Through the miracle of salvation, listen, through the miracle of salvation, you became one who possesses Christ Jesus. He who hath the Son hath life. You possess him. He is yours. Why don't you possess all the rest? Why don't you possess the overflow of that which Christ Jesus brings? The person of Christ Jesus is not going to be different in you right now than he was 2,000 years ago. The person of Christ Jesus is not going to be different in you than he is right now as the supreme Lord of heaven. Quit making your life separate and distinct and unique and different from him. Because that's doubt and unbelief. That's not faith. Shut that stuff down. The hard problems, the discouragement, the shame, the condemnation, the lies, the things that would be imposed upon you by this world, by the culture, by the powers of darkness, will literally choke out the word. Amen. The Lord wants to touch you and liberate you tonight. He wants you to move forward. The Lord wants to show you how to connect with the flow that, fl that is coming forth from Christ Jesus so that you might just line up Amen. like a lamp plugged into a light socket. Amen. I'm tired of watching the church walk around, you know, in their pajamas with their little <laughs> nightcap on and their lamp in their, in their hand and the plug in the other hand looking for the place to plug it in. With a frustrated look because none of the plugs worked that they tried. The Holy Spirit is here tonight to light you up. Yes. Listen, if prophecy is not flowing in your life, you need to come. You need to step forward. Because the Lord wants you to be enriched with all utterance. Yes. Yes. Listen. You receive right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Begin to, just begin to speak out right where you're at. Just speak out right where you're at. Speak out right where you're at. Speak out right where, right, where, right, where, right where you're at. Speak out. Just speak out those things that are in your heart that God the Holy Ghost is putting in your heart. Speak them out right where you're standing. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out right now. Speak it out right now. 
Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. That's right. Speak it out. Speak it out. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the moment for right now. Thank you for the miracle right now. Thank you for the miracle right now. Hey, I tell you what. Just go ahead and come on up. Just turn it down and come on up. Speak it out, speak out. You learn how to talk to God. Learn it. Let the Holy Spirit teach you how to fluently talk to God so that you can let, let the Holy Spirit teach you how to fluently talk to God so the Holy Spirit can also teach you how to speak and talk on behalf of God. His glory is here. Presence is here. Everyone, everyone that is standing here right now, those of you that are watching on the web right now, those of you that are watching on the YouTube right now, whatever sick in your body, what is ever is hurting in your body, what is ever causing you a problem, I want you to lay hand on it right now. And command the pain and command the sickness to go right now in Jesus' name.
Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name that every prayer that is prayed, that every petition that is given, that every request that is being made known, that you will answer them. You will answer every prayer. We thank you for answering every prayer. We thank you for answering every petition. We thank you for answering every request. Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name to cause every person that's standing here Every person that's listening to the sound of my voice to be able to function and flow in the realms of that which only you can provide in the disposition of your love and of your joy, of your faith, of your peace, that they arise with a whole nother disposition of life and confidence that no longer will be a struggle for them. They'll no longer try to have that which you've freely given They'll just receive that which is theirs right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, I ask you right now that every person standing here, everyone who hears the sound of my voice, that they will be overcome by your presence. They will have an encounter with you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anthony, come here. Can we stand here and just lift your hands towards the and stand right here? Close your eyes. Let Jesus touch you now. Let him 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 touch you. Let him touch you. Let him fill you with confidence. Let him fill you with boldness. The Lord has invited you into the kingdom of God. Listen to me. He's invited you in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. He's invited you in the kingdom of God that the kingdom of God may be expressed in your life. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. It's now time to start participating with these things. God will not force you. You have to yield yourself to that. You have to yield. When, when Paul describes in Romans chapter 6 of yielding your members unto, as weapons or instruments of righteousness, it is the act of your own will to submit to the will of the Father. It's the act of your own will to say, okay, I'm, going, I'm only allowing joy and peace. I'm only allowing righteousness. I'm giving myself over to this. I'm not allowing my mind and my thoughts to somehow condemn me and put me in this position of unrighteousness when I've been made the righteousness of God, the kingdom of God. God, the Holy Spirit, declares righteousness. It's a ministry of righteousness. So righteousness, right now in Jesus' name, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost is yours. Now, listen. The Word of God has got to be able to be received by you so that it activates that in your life. Supernaturally, it activates, it creates. It's not a, it's not a, a, a thing, an object. 
It's the power of God that creates. If you will hear, if you will hear, then you will receive. Suddenly joy will begin to work. And you won't have to try to be happy, make, okay, pastor's saying joy is supposed to be, I'm going to smile, ha, 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 ha. No. Father doesn't really need a lot of help from us other than saying, that's what I want. I agree with you, Lord, please, please. And then, I'm, thank you now. Amen. The kingdom of God, what God, the whole, is it, is it? it's what the Holy Ghost is doing. The kingdom of God. If the Lord said, the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace, get with it. Amen. Then okay, then yeah, then, you know, the response is amen. This is the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. It said that the Spirit of the Lord is just supplying. Now, I'm just, each person, I have learned how to yield my, myself to the Holy Spirit. We learn how to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit when we respond simply in obedience, when we're being tempted. We yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit who gives us the spirit of obedience to stand against it. We, we learn how to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit with thanksgiving and praise and worship. Instead of, you know, being upset or disgruntled or in doubt or discouraged. No, no, no. We yield only to the Holy Spirit. We don't yield to discouragement. We yield to the Spirit in praise and thanksgiving. We learn how to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit in prayer and praise God for the language of the Holy Ghost that really just helps us. It's an expedited plan of being able to yield to the Holy Ghost. Being able to yield to Him. And, and that's, what it's about, that's, supposed to, that's what's supposed to happen. If tongues is really what's happening in your life and it's real and it's from God, that is teaching you how to yield to what God the Holy Ghost is doing. And I believe that everyone in this place, you have a real experience in God and within the language of the Spirit. But you're going to have to be willing to move forward with Him now. Amen. To not feel like you're stuck, because you're not stuck. Amen. I'm going to come at you with a bucket. <laughs> now that... You know, that, that's, that's playing on the fear thing, and I'm not, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying. I just want you to help me I'm not coming at you with a bucket. I'm going to come at you with the hug. Isn't it a good thing that God the Holy Ghost is an encourager? Yeah. He doesn't go, oh, I can't believe you guys. Yeah. That's how we'll behave. We're not careful. Here, listen to me. You wake up in the morning. You leave out of here and you wake up in the morning. And the peace of God that passes understanding rules. Rules. The Greek word could actually be transla translated as the umpire. Saying, God. Not God. Strike. It's a ball. The umpire rules your heart, rules your mind with his peace. Peace. I believe in Jesus' name that every one of you is going to go to a place of prayer tomorrow and, and you're, you're going to look like me hugging Elizabeth.
And I wish Ann was here, you know. There's no insecurity there. You know, sometimes you look at people hugging each other, especially husband and wife, and you realize, wait a minute, son's being healed. Because there's an estrangement. You want to fix that behind closed doors? <laughs> Awkward. You and me? We're, so many people, is it almost we're in public, are, are hugging God and they're trying to get something fixed, some, you know, some breach, some violation. Something that they know that's not right between them and the Lord. Doesn't look good. It's okay, we could do that, we can do that, but let's, can we stop doing that at some point? Pretty quickly? Yeah. As the church, as the glorious church, yes. that he's presented unto himself without spot or blemish. Amen. Not one that's gonna be in the future, the one that's in, oh, he's already done. The one that's already done. That you and I get to come and join and be a part of through the new birth. Amen. This new creation where the waters have broke forth in the wilderness and springs in the desolate places. Which speaks of His Spirit. It speaks of the expressions of God the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, this speck of the Holy Ghost. Which speaks of the water also of His Word because what the Holy Ghost is doing is truth and it's God's Word. It's the Word of the Lord that is truth to where that's what's issuing forth out of your life are the expressions of God, the Holy Ghost, the expressions of the Word of God. And you're not giving your, your mouth, your tongue, your lips to guile and offense anymore. Amen. It's the Word. It's Amen. His Word. Amen. It's the declarations of His Word. It's His praise. It's thanksgiving. You put on your makeup, women. <laughs> Guys have certain things of that too, but not as exotic. <laughs> Before you go out in public, you fix yourself up. Why? So that you can be presentable and acceptable to men, liked, People aren't going. Because <laughs> give yourself a couple of days and we'll all be fanning ourselves. <laughs> eh? That's it. You forget who you are. Just give yourself a couple of days without a bath. I've been some places in the world where they've gone years without it. I mean, it's tough. <laughs> How about putting on the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. How about putting on the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. How about putting on the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. I'm going to wake up in the morning at about a quarter to four to get ready to leave, to go out of town. I'm going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How? Simply yielding to the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to get on the armor, try to find my sword strap on the girdle, put on my boots, get the helmet on. I, I'm just going to yield to the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to praise the Lord. I'm just going to thank Him. I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, woo my life. I yield myself to you. Open up your mouth and speak. Father, once every one of you, how is it every one of you hath the tongue, hath an interpretation, hath a revelation? How is it every one of you hath the prophecy? Listen, you're not prophesied by one, one by one. You're kind of, you can do these things one by one. Understand the context of this. These are people that are given away talking to the Lord in, in the language of the Spirit. They've actually more than likely promoted the language of the Spirit above prophecy because Paul's having to say, no, 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 prophecy is higher than the language of the Spirit. 
And I can understand why they thought that way because I'm sure Paul taught them or left them that impression because he started that church, it's his problems. He made those problems. <laughs> True. And he just corrected it, he brought it into order. And I want you to just understand, dear people, learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit and talk to the Father fluently. I, I believe a, a great step forward is to be able to take the mic and just start handing it to people and let them pray. And let it sound like a beautiful thing. The prayer of faith, speaking, talking to the Lord, giving yourself tomorrow, to talking to Him, spending time. Separate yourself to Him. If you're having a hard time finding time, there's, we need to work on this. You need to look like Elizabeth to me. Something's coming out of your mouth. Something's, you learn how to talk to Him by the Spirit of the Lord, and you'll learn how to talk on His behalf by the Spirit of the Lord. You can't have one before the other. I mean, we could do that, but I mean, it's just a whole bunch to walk through. And the Lord allows it. It, it can't be, it, it's supposed to be. I mean, I'll prophesy one by one. It's not to be prevented. But it has to be in the context of the body of Christ. You've got to be a part. Paul didn't allow outsiders to come in, people that weren't a part of the body. People that you, you said, look at them, watch them, know who they are. First, then let them speak. God's got some rules, we follow them. I follow his rules. I, follow, I walk in his divine order. I'm walking in his divine order. I'm giving myself to his divine order. And I, I want to encourage every one of you. I want every one of you to step out. I want you to be bold in faith. I want you to just let the Spirit, let the Spirit of the Lord speak out through you. And, and, and I, want to, I want to encourage you. Let that vocalization just begin to be developed and released in just praising Him. And bless me and help me because that I'm watching you praise him. Bless me and help me as I'm watching you fluently talk to him in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What's up? Come here. What's up? Revelation 3.21, and just got hit with it when I was ministering to the kids. It's just talking about how us imitating God, even to the point where we, he wants us to imitate him and sit down on the throne next to him, just like he sat down. So, so it's just like, he's just like, he wants us to be in it. And, and it's only possible if we're going to overcome our sins. Sometimes I felt like I was supposed to speak to the church and just say, to the church, God desires us to overcome our sins. And that's, you know, and that's good. And that's good. Because that's a doctrine. It's a teaching that the Lord gave you. And then that's good. Yeah. I know it's God good. gave me a revelation, but I tell you, like, hit me deep when I go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, really? He wants us to sit on no, this. No, that's it. That's it. And then, and then on top of that, just too, it's like, God's giving us, like, what you're talking about, all these things today. It's just like, all these wonderful, glorious gifts. Why do we mm. care about anything else when we're just like, when we keep our eyes set on, 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 on this, this, this glorious opportunity? That it's good. Let's go ahead and share that a little bit. Because it's, 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 it's a revelation, and it's a teaching. Yeah, and the Spirit of the Lord says, How is it every one of you hath the revelation? Just, like, I'm just. Every, every one of you have the tongue. Every one of you have an interpretation tongue. You have a revelation or a teaching. And it's good. So um, today, you know, when I was ministering to the kids, I was, I was, uh, uh, I was reading Revelation three twenty one, and and it's talking about, you know, 
Jesus himself, well, he was talking about being an overcomer. He's talking about if, if you overcome as I overcome, then, then you can sit with me in my throne. Just as I overcame, I sat on, in, my, in my father's throne. So I'm like, wait, is that, like, let me reread this again, okay? God wants us to imitate him, or Jesus wants us to imitate him in every way, yeah. even to the point where he wants us to sit down in his throne room, like he sat in the throne room of his father. And so, so, so I just got hit with these different things with just like, God wants us to imitate him in every way. He wants us to do signs, wonders, miracles. He wants us to flow in the joy, then the fellowship. Function in his has. authority. Just a function in every area. His power. Of and, then, and then just part of that just hit me then again too. Like all this just kind of hit me. It's just like, okay, why do I care about anything else? Well, look, how amazing is this that God, and then I was also talking about just how awesome God is and how God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am, the majestic one. He, he wants me to come and sit with him. He wants to have fellowship. He wants to have communion with me. And so it's like, why do we care about anything else? I'm just like, I, and so in my spirit, I just had a greater resolve, greater than ever before. I am going to lay hold of this. God, thank you for making me an overcomer. I, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing on this earth worthy of, of competing with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm going after, that's what I want. You know what I mean? I want, I want what, I want that, you know? And we're all been given. God's given us all this opportunity. God's all, he's, he's extended this to every single one of us. And yeah. all we have to do is lay hold of it and grab a hold of it. He desires to have fellowship, friendship. He's, he's, he's caused us to, you know, be sons or daughters of God, you know, in, in, in his family, invited in his family. And we're talking the creator of the heavens and the earth, you know? And so, I don't know. I just like going, God. I'm going, to, I'm going to grab a hold. Thank you that you caught, thank you for making me an overcomer. And then everything that Pastor Mark was talking about today is just more telling us how, how to do it. How to, how, I mean, this is kind of like the end result. Let's sit down with God on his throne. You know what I mean? But like, how are we going to get there? You know, so then Pastor Mark is talking about all the things of how we're going to get there, how we're going to just rejoice and how we're going to just thank God for everything he's given us. You know? Listen, you know, you just consider the reality that the Lord says that we're seated together with him in the heavenlies. Crucified together with him, buried with him by baptism into his death. These things are happening. These happen. You, you just say, well, I, I'm not going to believe it to or see it. Or if it's true, then I would have, you know, somehow observed it. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? This is a miracle thing that God did. You cru you're crucified together with him. You're buried with him by baptism into his death. It's not blind faith. It's faith that sees. You got, God allowed us in his word to see the miracle. We're, we're raised up together with him. I mean, come on, you're talking about, give me a break. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to believe I'm healed until I feel it. Give me a break. Yeah. Then you're not going to believe you're raised up with him until you feel that. <laughs> I'm alive together with him. I feel that. Yeah. Well, I feel that I'm raised up. I feel raised up. I didn't feel crucified. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I praise God I didn't feel crucified. <laughs> he bore that all for me. And I'm seated together with him in the heavenly. In the heavenly realm. Seated together with him in the throne room. Can you imagine? You may all prophesy one by one and let the others judge, but there's no Bible. Are you with me? Because there was no Bible put together at this moment in time. When Paul speaks forth the things of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, there was the letter that he sent to them. You know, there was this letter, but he's sending this letter and telling them that they're all supposed to judge. There's no Bible that they have to judge by. Wow. Because the Bible wasn't, the Bible wasn't put together for until a little over 30 years later. Because that was right around 61, 62 AD at the latest, at the very latest. And there's arguments that it was more mid 50s, 50s. True. Now we got it easy. Because, because Brad gets to come up here with revelation on the revelation. <laughs> And then we get to judge that the context is proper, it's not improper, because there's two applications. There's the application of the, of the reality of who we are going to be when we see him, when we're, 
when the corruptible puts on the incorruptible, the mortal puts on the immortal, but it's also the reality of where we are with him right now as overcomers and this authority that we have because we don't give place to the enemy in our life. We don't give place to all the doubt and the unbelief. We give only place to the things of the Spirit of the Lord is producing faith and confidence in our lives. We don't give place to yielding our members to unrighteousness. Whereas we yield our members to righteousness, they're as overcomers. We're seated in a place of authority with him, just like he's in the place of authority in the Father. We watch the obedient son's model that we're in, imitate. So we say, yeah, the revelation is true. And sometimes, I mean, I, I'm just so blessed at the way that Brad is growing and maturing, developing in the things of the Spirit. Sometimes I just like to hear what was being, I want to hear, I hear. Because I want to just know that it's in, that the, the flow is as you're developing. It's good to just hear, unless you just say it twice. And of course, Allie always looks ready. I, you always look anointed. You're always, I see always the anointing on her. <laughs> Who here has lumbar back pain? Very good. This is the word of knowledge, <laughs> lumbar back pain. Come. And who here is having headaches and problems with their eyes? Headaches, problem with the eyes? Come right now. Be healed. Love. Be healed right now. <laughs> Come on now. The Lord pointed out to just let you know. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name. Hot <laughs> tootsie In Jesus' name. Okay, here it goes. Watch out. See? Look, it, it spreads. <laughs> It spread. In Jesus' it, mighty see, name. See, watch, when you hook up healed. with the word of knowledge, it spreads. <laughs> it's, I, he, he, I don't think he had it. He, 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 <laughs> the word of knowledge immediately activates the word of knowledge, okay? Anyone who's been having anxiety, you feel pressure on your chest. You feel pressure on your chest. Almost like a heart pain. It's not. It's an anxiety. It, you, it can be just, it can be, it can be mistaken for heart pain. It's simply anxiety. Come, let the Lord release you from it right now. Set baby down. Set baby down. He won't wander off too far. He won't get in the street. I promise. The doors are locked. Or they're shut. It goes from you now. The Lord send forth His Word and He heals. That's the power of His Word. That anxiety and that fear. In Jesus' name. You foul spirit of hell. It releases from off of you. Huh? You feel it go? Is it gone? Is it gone? It doesn't come back. It's gone? It's gone? And it doesn't come back. Now, now, understand, as the word of knowledge goes forth, you can actually pick just, if you yield to it, the word of knowledge, it just, it's just right there. You know how to yield to it. It's just there. You used to function in it. If somebody prophesies, same way. The prophecy just, when the spirit of prophecy is here, all you've got to understand is how to yield your members to the Spirit of the Lord. And you can connect with prophecy. God's not leaving you out. Just get connected. Uh, and if, if, if for some reason you don't feel connected, I want you just to begin to talk with Father. Say, Father, help me to understand how not to let anything isolate me. Show, just simply say, shine the floodlight upon my soul. Lord, fix this thing with me. Because if you expect me to fix it, you look into the wrong person. I'm not the Mecca. Amen. Healer, supplier, deliverer. Jesus is all of those things. You must talk to him. Because the issue isn't between you and me or anyone else. The issue is between you and him. And only he can show you what's displaced in you from that flow, the proper connection. In the name of Jesus Christ. No more anxiety. There's someone else here who has it. There's someone else here who's dealing with it. Hey, I gotta do two rounds. Listen, the Lord loves you. He's not persecuting you. That's the other fellow. God the Holy Ghost isn't persecuting you. He's not slandering you. God wants 
you to be able to activate the shield of faith which works by love. Now I feel that thing going. I'm feeling better now. Praise God. I'm feeling better now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, it's going off of you. The thing is being broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we love you. No pressure, no stress, no anxiety. Enjoy the sweet fellowship of love. It's the worst thing about sin and disobedience. It makes you feel distant from the Lord. The blood is supposed to, faith in the blood of Jesus Christ is supposed to instantly remedy that. So you can go on being developed and and matured in the things of the Spirit to where you don't sin. You don't give yourself up. You don't way mature anymore. Amen. Walking around stumbling and fumbling in the dark. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Comfort ye, comfort ye. Comfort ye, comfort ye. Says the Lord, I paid double. What's happening? Huh? Anxiety. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this old foul spirit of fear and torment. Leaves you, but you can't put your hand right there on your chest for me. It leaves you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost on my dear sister. I thank you for the life giving flow of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the Lord. No more in Jesus' name. No more in Jesus' name. From this day forward raptured by the love of God, captivated by His presence in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mambrake di no no mo shapre mingi pra no na kli no mo slevenik li li no mo plain li batiki no mo kitatu no mo shapre. Right out of your belly begins to flow. This wonderful river and expression of divine glory, this language of the Holy Ghost, this intercession of the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, goes from you. Completely goes from you. Goes from you. Goes. And it never returns. It goes from you and never returns. No more sorrow, no more sighing, no more dying. But joy and rejoicing. Breakthrough for you tonight. <laughs> Into the realms of joy, the realm, deeper realms of love. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
the tip of your head. The tip of your head. Eto romos ikiti and debrisus lena. Every fearful thing, every unbelieving thing, every doubtful thing, every lie and oppression of hell, I bind in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I see a whirlwind of the Spirit coming upon you. I see the tornado of divine glory getting you. imagine in large part that this is the way the church functioned wasn't everybody all organized and nice to look neat rows sitting in chairs and music taking like a platform and everybody else out in the auditorium that's a modern day thing there's people gathered together in a room in a, in a building, some of you most of the time very small building, and just singing and worshiping, praising God, lifting up their voice in prayer and praise. Huh? And someone who was a, the leader in the place, the apostle, the prophet, or the pastor, usually apostle or a pastor, leader in the place, begin to deliver a word of God, begin flowing the anointing, revelation, knowledge. Hmm? Then as this, as this word of instruction is going forth and people are being built up in the faith and hearing what they need to do, the loss being present, power of God coming upon them, convicting them, a work of grace that had already begun in their life, salvation is beginning to take place, the eruption of tongues and interpretation of tongues, prophecy one by one going forth, revealing the secrets See, as you begin to speak by the Spirit of the Lord, it, it, doesn't, it really doesn't sound much different than prayer. It really doesn't sound much different than conversation. You ever just started talking to someone or just, you're just, you're just flowing out of you, just talking, just in general, you're just speaking to them about the Lord, and the reality of it was you were just revealing what was going on in their life and you didn't even know it? Because you're just flowing, you're just talking. You're not under pressure, you're not under the confinement or the restraint of some kind of, 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 of idea of what that is, expression is supposed to look like. It's just a flow. You're, you're at home. You're, if you can just get still, you can just get quiet, you'll flow. If you feel under pressure, that's, you, it's a self-imposed pressure. You need to relax. You just begin to relax. It's, uh, huh? It comes out, but not only comes out, which most of you can hook up with as soon as most of you can hook up with that. But you should be able to also give yourself over to hooking up with every other dimension of the moving of the Spirit of the Lord, because Jesus is here. He's here. Holy Ghost is here. Dividing individually to every man the manifestation of His glory and power. We don't want anybody to feel left out. If you feel left out, if you feel somehow rejected, if you feel somehow unwanted, if you still feel how somehow unappreciated, why don't you dive into Jesus? Just 
type into Jesus. It's a terrible life when you have to live in the realm of it's all about me or what about me. Either one is bad. Frustrating. Say, Lord, I'm yours. You are, you are mine. I'm in you. You're in me. And my goodness, you talk about the refreshing and the peace and the rest. Oh, my, 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 my. Now you liberated the flow. Pressure's off. The pressure's off, the glory's on. Thank you so much. We love you so much. I, I'm just so, I'm so earnest for you. I'm so desirous that you recognize tonight how the enemy of your soul has come out to kill, steal, and destroy. He's come out to rob, to oppress, to lie against the truth. And Father wants you to understand how to make all that he is doing ineffective. Where no weapon formed against you can prosper. Where no influence of hell has any, any, any influence upon your attitudes, your emotions, your thinking. None. None. Satan comes and he has nothing in me. There's no wiggle room. He has nothing to connect with me in. He has nothing against, he has nothing he can hold over me. He has nothing he can hold against me. He has nothing he can manipulate me with. There's no place in my attitudes in my heart and my thinking anyway. That brings release to you. Because you're in Him. You're in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if I had my way now, I mean, goodness, you know, I, you know, I just really believe that if you stay here in this place we're in right now, that it just keeps building song and worship and prayer and praise. But I'm going to ask you to do it in your personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. Seek him in secret and let him reward you openly. Yes. 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 Thank you, Father. Just give yourself to this realm of. I, I promise you, driving down the road, just worshiping the Lord, the prophecy began to flow out of me. Go on my way to work, just prophesying. And, and the Lord honed me in, tuned me up. Just caught away in heaven, in the car. Nobody, no audience but angels. And of course, I always prophesy. I always profit from the prophecy, prophesying. Just give yourself to these things. Yield your members to this realm. It's fun. Yeah. Amen. It's a better time than anything else you're doing. I want to encourage you tonight. Honor the Lord with your substance. Worship Him with your finances. I just praise God for everything that we've been able to, you know, do. And I'm going to just tell you, listen, I want you to know what happened the other night because I, I just want to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. For the, for, um, the untouchables yeah. in India yeah. and Nepal, over $3,000 came in. Beautiful. Now, here, here's what the Lord laid on my heart because of the way we're developing those things is I felt let's let's do this let's give each a thousand dollars a month that's where my faith is at 
and everything that's over and over that we put in a fund that is designated for both because there's always these special things coming up, these events where they're in crisis, they need finances. Okay? And so we're, we're building an account for them that everything is over $2,000. We're gonna do it once a month, the third week of every month. And then we'll watch when special events come up and if, or special needs come up. And if, you know, if no special needs come up, then at Christmas time, we empower them to reach so many more people yeah. with, with the distribution of things that they can give at Christmas. So it was just important to me to let you know because I told you that whatever we brought in, half of it would go to India and half of it would go to Nepal. And when, I, when, and, and, and when it came in and I saw what it was, the Spirit of the Lord laid on my heart to do what, what we did. And then, of course, I'm going to let you know because I want to, everybody to understand where your giving is going and, and to be 100% accountable to you in it. We are. If you ever want to know where all the finances are going, what all they're doing, we're doing with it, I'm happy to expose to you the miracle that God's constantly working and the distribution to the saints. And you're like, where, you mean that much money came in over the month? Wow. And how much went out? How does that work? Yeah. God's so good. Amen. Does anybody feel less than perfectly whole? Does anyone feel less than perfectly whole? I don't want to dismiss, and I don't like to dismiss, and I don't know how to dismiss. So just find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. I tell my wife, I said, yeah, we'll probably do a short meeting tonight. She laughed. She said, what's that look like? When do you do that? I want to also encourage all of you to, I mean, listen, listen, I want everybody to make sure that they hear me. I would like to understand what is the fascination with the back rows? I would like to encourage all of you to fill up the front. Pack in. If there's somebody having hygiene problems, let me know. I'll, I'll, I will talk to them. But I'm sure that that's not the issue. I'm just trying to be funny. Just get in close. Get in close. Don't move towards the back door. It's a manifestation. Preachers all over the world say, watch, you can tell the person, that's, the people that are getting ready to leave that the enemy's sorting out. They keep drifting back to the back rows. And finally, they're on the back row. They're on the back row, and then they leave out the door. You never see them again. So when I see people on the back row, I'm going, oh my goodness. Is that many people getting ready to go? We love all of you. Getting close. Amen.